two, boom. We in here, baby. Yes, sir. We have been this thing, man. Friday. No sleeves. You already know what it is. You know what it is, man. <laughs> yeah, turn the heat off outside. Jesse, this is a, this is a, a great time of year. This is how it should be. Now, I'm not going to go run no marathon. In this. I ain't saying all that. I'm just saying it's a great time of year. This is perfect. Perfect. Definitely not marathon weather. Marathon weather is brisk. Steve, what's happening? <laughs> yeah, that's on brand. It's on brand with radio. <laughs> that is uh that is on brand with radio stations. Cheryl and B more, we talking about yeah, the weather. The, the temps definitely are up. We talking, what was it, 106 today? Mm -hmm. It's supposed to be 106 today. Mm -hmm. And we ain't talking 106 in park. Uh-uh. Chester, what's happening? Kirk. Uh, uh, look, don't take this any type of way. You mentioned 106 and Park. I know you know the show, but is that you wasn't a you were an adult by then, right? Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. a lot of people yeah, are like, it started oh. at the end, it started at the tail end of high school. People were like, Oh yeah, we used to come home and watch 106 and mm -hmm. Park. I was like, ah, maybe, like maybe like my sophomore year in high yeah, school. Yeah, like like late, late. Yeah, yeah, when I was graduating, it was. It was I didn't really pop come off. home to watch 106 and Park. I don't have like nostalgic feels about 106 and Park. Not like I do show. Video Soul or Yo mm -hmm. MTV Raps mm -hmm. or something like that, or even Rap City. Rap City, that's the one. Or Caribbean Rhythms. Oh, hello. Right to be in Caribbean Sands with Rachel. <laughs> Rachel. Rachel. It's <laughs> unreal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Frank White got sex appeal. <laughs> used to go ill still yeah man yeah and ananda ananda looks the same i saw her on like twitter six months ago looks the exact same i believe it What's good, baby? It is Friday. Let's go. Yes, June indeed. 10th. It's Stilo and KC brought to you by McQueen and the Violet Fog. The smoothest gin in the world, handcrafted in Brazil. First pour on ice. <laughs> Coming up four hours from right now. I'm Damian Barling. Acknowledge me. He's Kenny Caraway. Yes, sir. Acknowledge me. And with the opportunity to... What was that like? Well, well, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. I'm Demi Barling. He's Kenny Caraway. Yes, sir. Acknowledge me. Hey, watch your mouth, woman. <laughs> that's funny. That's funny. That's a, that's, that's, that's a good one right there. That's a good one. See, I was trying to throw in an extra. Acknowledge me for jesse whose squad's about to you know they, they, they got the opportunity to go up 3-1 today yeah. uh he's on top of the world i wanted to make sure we got his acknowledgement in there too i wasn't well, prepared case, for all those crazy people in boston some <laughs> of the warrior fans hey watch your mouth woman <laughs> oh i love it that is a winner <laughs> that is a winner hey watch your mouth woman <laughs> Man. And then, and then as the thing goes along, he goes, "I better, I bet you better hope I don't remember your face because you're gonna be out of here." And she goes, I, "I can't hear you. Can't. <laughs> Get out of here. Get lost." I, hey, what? And that's not even the appropriate response for what she said. That is not no. even. Hey, what? No. That, hey, that ain't that. That's not the re LeBron James's response was the appropriate one. Right. The stop, pause, and the look. Oh, word. Oh. Okay. Okay. She like Savannah right. wasn't around. Oh man. Could you imagine oh, if somebody said that, that to, uh, See, that's... to to Doug Christie? 
knowing Jackie was going, <laughs> bruh, bruh. <laughs> Ain't nobody gonna do that. They, 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 they know better. They got, especially today. <laughs> especially today with 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 social media and TVs and reality shows. Yeah. Oh no. Yeah, no. Oh, I've seen I've seen Jackie's show like I rem- I remember vividly the first time I saw Jackie's show. Uh-huh. And it, I don't know if that day they were airing the best of Jackie Christie. Uh-huh. But I remember going the next day I said DC I uh I saw your show for the first time. <laughs> And he just he just kind of laughed. He said, hey, that's not my show. But like she was she was so like theatrical. She was like, oh, she's like flailing, like in this gown and she's falling on the ground and she's like pulling her dress off. I, don't, I can't I don't even remember what it was. But I just remember, like, this is no wonder people watch this. This is incredible. This is fantastic. I, I, look, I can get I can get lost in a basketball wise marathon. I ain't gonna lie to you. I can. Oh, it's good stuff. Yeah. Good stuff. That, that young lady in Golden State. <laughs> she said that real, the, the real, dog, real classy. Jackie was around. <laughs> oh, man. Real classy. Real classy. Real classy. Golden State, <laughs> Oakland. Game four of the NBA Finals uh, is tonight. We're going to spend a great deal of time talking about that. Can you have the idea of taking a deep dive into Paolo Bancaro? Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. <sighs> Man. I thought I was crazy about Shane, uh, Shane Sharp. Oh, my goodness. Well, we we did. Uh, and we'll, we'll, we'll tell you what we saw. I don't even – honestly, we may find, need to find something else to do with that 30-plus minutes because mm. I, I can't envision anyone who looks at that and goes, nah, he ain't it. <laughs> like I can't, like, I can't, like I don't, I don't care how bad Orlando or Houston or Oklahoma City, baby. No one's looking at that and going, that ain't it. Now we're good. Oh man, that dude is, dude. He is, he's the truth. You talked about shades of Carmelo the first time you saw him. Mm. Mm. Carmelo, one of the greatest scorers of all time. Mm. But I see what you meant. Yeah, yeah. I ain't saying you gonna get there. I see what you meant. So we'll uh, we'll talk about that. We got Casey's mock draft three point coming three point oh coming up uh, this first hour here uh, of the show as well. Kyle Matson will be with us. James Ham will be with us. Uh, Trista can't be with us. She's going to war with all of the Golden State Warrior fan base, so she's gonna uh, miss out on today's show. I also think she's under the weather, so get well soon, Trista. Uh, it's hard work going to war with a fan base 24 hours a it day. Is. It that's going to be a story tonight. Like that's when you turn on the NBA countdown tonight, that's, that's what they're going to be talking about. They're going to be talking about fan bases. Mm-hmm. They're going to be talking about the, 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 the Boston fans and Draymond green. They're going to play the remarks from clay Thompson and Steve Kerr. They're going to play the clips of the podcast where he says F you two and all of that stuff. And mm-hmm. we're just going to run it back. And, 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 and that's, I, th- I think you said this yesterday. It's probably going to be a little bit amped up. I, I, I think so too. I think everybody's turned higher. Be, everybody's going to be uh, turned higher. Whether it's, I think Draymond Green is going to be turned up higher. I think the Boston crowd is definitely going to be turned up higher, and they're going to be they're going to be on all these people. They're going to be on Draymond. They're going to be on Steve Kerr. They're going to be on Clay Thompson. That's right. Yeah. It's nine o'clock Eastern Friday night. It's it's lit. <laughs> That's all I can say. Is this lit? This is going to be a good one right here. This yeah. is gonna be a good one because I was getting to, um, you know, I was listening to our guys, uh, Butcher and Bonte, ninety five seven the game. They holding up okay. They're holding up okay, but they think <laughs> this is, they think this is the 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 matchup of the century. This is the oh. game of the century. This is this. They feel like this may define what the Warriors are gonna be moving forward for the next five six years. Oh my. Yeah, they said okay. you might have to break up break up the band if if, uh, if they don't win this game because they they're in the belief, much like I am, that this is the series tonight. Mm-hmm. If Boston wins this game, I think they win the NBA Finals. But to 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 be to be fair though, and and clear, you think this is the series either way? Yeah, no, no, yeah, that's what I'm about to say. Like if, if, if if it goes two two, you think yeah, that's Boston Golden win. State? Exactly. If Boston wins this. I think they win the NBA Finals. If Golden State wins this game, I think they win the NBA Finals. So Kenny says the NBA Finals will 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 be determined tonight. The NBA champion will be determined 
tonight mm -hmm. uh, in the mind of Kenny Carraway. And I, I, I get that line of thinking. I, I have concerns about them uh, going back to Oakland or sorry, San Francisco. And while it'll be a story about the fan base ramping up and I don't know who their targets going to be. <laughs> like I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't know who they're going to go at, like the yeah. way Boston fans are going at Draymond. But Boston is pretty uh, like well, the, it, the this roster, this this group of guys. There, no real villains. Even if you try to throw Marcus Smart in there, he's not that. You know, like Marcus he's, Smart, you, you look at him and you 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 just love the way he plays. Which you gonna boo Al Horford because because he was the one who landed on Steph's Steph's leg? I I, I don't know. Um, but outside of player fan interaction. Mm -hmm. Steph's ankle, Celtics turnovers, and which role players on each side are going to yeah. step up tonight? Yeah, you 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 know something else that they mentioned that was pretty interesting, man. It's pretty interesting, and and I I hadn't done the the statistical research, so I I wanted to do that before you know I really dove into it a little bit. And I mean, I, I'm 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 going to talk about him because it's the NBA Finals. This is what's going on. I'm not picking on the guy, but it just is what it is. I always felt I felt Draymond Green has been terrible the entire series. I felt even when Golden State turned up, a lot of that was with Draymond off the court. That's when they really started to to, to turn all the way up. The numbers bear that out. You know, the the plus minus the on off court offense or whatever is significantly better when Draymond is off the court. And I was listening to Butcher and Bonte, and they went down the road. They were like, well, what do you do? You got to change this up. You know, do we put Otto Porter Jr. in there? Um, do you get Jordan Poole in there? You know, if not, you're going to take out Looney. Uh, you know, who you take out? And then they – and Bonte, shout out to him, man. He, 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 he laid it out, and he's 100% right. And in every respect, when I say this, the answer is you move Draymond out of the starting lineup. Mm. That's the problem. You move Looney out. That's the one bit of size that you have. And, and you sacrifice that, you know, going up against a Rob Williams or anything like that. Um, you move him out for Otto Porter Jr. You're really small. You move him out for Jordan Poole. You're really, really small. Then all these guys, while they haven't played great, fine. Like you, I feel like you can live with it. The problem is the guy who's not defending anybody, the guy who's not rebounding, the guy who's not scoring, who's not doing any playmaking, that's the guy that you move out of the starting lineup to bring in a Kaminga or bring in the Otto Porter Jr. or something like that. But what they also said is 100% right. They'd never do that. They'd never, they'd never sub out Draymond Green out of the starting lineup. Why not? Because if it's I, best for business, I think I think they're they're right in this thinking, and I agree with it. You would lose them. Draymond wow. Draymond is not he he would never put the team in front of his ego. Hmm. He if if Steve Kerr went to him and said, "Hey, we're going to start Otto Porter Jr. right now because this is this is the lineup that works best against this particular team we're trying to win," I think you lose Draymond. I believe Steve Kerr and his coaching staff, uh, including Sacramento Kings head coach Mike Brown, mm -hmm. are smart enough to recognize that the while it was a, a, a great topic of discussion on sports talk shows, radio shows, television shows, all of that after game two, the tone, if you will, the, 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 the tone of physicality that Draymond Green set in game number two mm -hmm. didn't have an impact on the game. Like, sorry, let me rephrase it. It absolutely had an impact on the game. It didn't have an impact on the outcome of the game. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. again, you when, you, when, you, when you play the timeline out, it, all, all of, you know, the antics with, 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 with Grant Williams, the, 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 the uh, all, all, all of the, the different things that he managed to get himself into with, with, with Jalen, all that other stuff. It's in the first half when it was 52 to 50 at half. Mm hmm. Like that stuff didn't bear an impact. It 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 may have pushed the the Golden State Warriors a little bit. It may have fired them up a little bit. It may have gotten them rocking a little bit, but it didn't allow them to pull away from the Golden State Warriors. No. I wonder 
Hmm. That's, 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 that's interesting. That's interesting. It's a tough adjustment to make now though. I, 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 mm-hmm. I, I would say that from a coaching perspective, it's a tough adjustment like that. I don't think you've ever made before right. to make here in the, you know, three, four most important games of the season. Yeah, no, I agree. But I understand. That's what championship coaches got to do. Mm. Um, not trying to drop this into Steve Kerr's lap, but that's interesting. That's interesting. It, it, it'll, it'll, you know, d- d- Draymond's, <laughs> he will be a story tonight, no matter what. Right. Uh, whether it's a, a solid triple single that helps the Warriors win or it's a performance like he had in in, in game number three. Draymond will be a, a, a main focus of, of the story tonight uh, when game four of the NBA Finals get underway, which you can hear, of course, on your home of the NBA Finals, ESPN 1320. We're going to come back. We'll talk a lot more uh, about the NBA Finals as the day goes along. But we dove into some film from Duke yesterday. Mm-hmm. Man, I cannot wait to hear uh, what you have to say. We'll share with you. Uh, Some of the things that we found, the good, the bad, and truthfully, for the first time, I'm not sure that there's any ugly. (laughs) Man, tell me about it. (laughs) anxious to get your thoughts. Uh, We'll talk Paolo Bancaro when Dilo and Casey return here on Sacramento's number one sports station, ESPN 1320. Okay. Uh. Guys, don't mind me. I'm just working a couple things out real quick. Oh, Trey Carter. Yeah, you got to ignore that stuff. People just say dumb shit about the Kings because they, because it's the Kings and they think that they can. Who said what? Um, where's Trey? Nick's podcast line on YouTube saying Kings want to trade De'Aaron Fox in fourth for the Knicks eleventh and RJ Barrett. Yeah, I ignore that, Trey. <sighs> yeah, Leezy, kind of buddy, what? and and Leezy, I see your I see your follow up where you ask where is that Draymond Leezy? That was six years ago, fam. Yeah, he, he's that's six years ago, buddy. Almost to the day. That's a long time. That guy's gone. It's a long time, Lazy. Oh, here's a question for Jesse. Tatum gets his ring. Would it be better than the 2008 championship? Oh, I, 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 you guys won't even be able to hear him, so I'll answer it. <laughs> this is going to, I know it's going to be better for Jesse because Jesse was 2008. That was 14 years ago. Yeah, yeah. Jesse was 12. Uh, The 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 thing about winning championships and, and doing stuff at that time, I deal with this with the 49ers. Yeah, I was around. I remember the season. I remember the 94 season and everything we went through. I need one as an adult. I'm pretty sure that's where Desi is right now. I need one yeah. as an adult. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> I need I need a championship as a grown ass man. That's what I need. I realize I got some stuff in the closet I might have to break out if things oh. go if things go uh oh. if things go Jesse's way. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm with that, Kyle. I'm with that. They're the ones who act like it's the the most amazing championship of all time. <laughs> That's cold, something Jesse. Nobody else That's can do. Cold. Can't can't fault fault them for that. I don't know why, but that felt racist. <laughs> that was terrible, Jesse. You're fined a hundred thousand dollars. Oh my gosh! You find a oh hundred hundred thousand dollars in sensitive remarks. Boy, Jesse got a point though. 
if things don't break Doc's way, that title sure does look a little different. They were the only ones to get them there. Especially when you look at like pre-2008. <laughs> hey, How about hey, everything hey. else in his career? <laughs> Can y'all hit the real, we're going to talk about that. We need there to tell is. the whole story. Doc, I need you to tell me <laughs> the entire story about that 2008 championship. Because I know. I know, Doc. <laughs> I know what that 2008 championship meant to you. You ain't got to tell me. I know. Well, well, I mean, it's clear as day right there. I mean, when we've been healthy, we've won every time. That's true. Kendrick Perkins has never lost a Seven game series, and then I think the next year it was KD, K- K- KG, KG, Kevin, K- Kevin Garnett never yeah. lost. Uh, Jesse, do you think they would have won if Kendrick Perkins doesn't tear his ACL? That it's game seven weeks. was so ugly. It was. That was one of the ugliest game sevens in history. That was the only time I seen Kobe shook. Mm. Kobe, not even like scared. He was just, he was gone. Oh, man. Okay. For some reason, the beat came on. And I started thinking about the the eerie version that they switched up for the Jordan. Uh, Jordan almost uh, almost said the Jordan. I almost said the Jordan Pool movie. <laughs> <laughs> but then, it, like, did you see the trailer for the new one? He's got a new. one? I think it's called Nope. No, I haven't seen it. It's got somewhere like it's got it's got uh, somewhere over the rainbow plank. Like I saw it at get Game Three. Mm. I was just sitting there, like uh, going to commercials putting some things into the computer and somewhere and it's like playing like what the hell am i and i look up and all jordan peel and i'm like oh god what'd he do now oh no what is this i don't even have a feel for 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 what it what it is but i'm gonna have to check this out now that that dude is see what's going on here i i that that dude he think different (laughs) like that (laughs) like that like my man does not think like you and i he thinks uh he thinks differently um well, he's he's two for two though right we can say that two for two i think he's got more than two movies but yeah those those two those two are smashes i thought us was really good us was cool i thought it was good i mean it was a good movie it was a thriller like it was a, it wasn't a, that like like get a, get get out was a psychological thriller Mm. us was just a thriller now because it's Jordan Peele you die like you you overthink it and you dive Mm. into it and you're like oh look at this look at this and like then you realize like there were clues all throughout the movie like "Eh, some that's a good movie that that that, that needs a rewatch at the uh or or it's one of those things it's one of those things where they're like oh what he really meant right there was it was the psychological nature of black men in America. Mm-hmm. And then you talk to Jordan Pill and he's like, no, he just grabbed a fork out of the drawer. <laughs> no, like, that's no, all I was. No, the one, see, see, that's not funny because you're talking about me. In the 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 the, the, the get out scene where the girl is eating like fruit loops like dry, just out of a bowl, and then she's got the milk in the other glass, and uh, you Oh, it's keeping the white purity. That's what it is. It's keeping white purity. And Jordan was like, "Yeah, that was a coincidence. That was not planned. Like that. There, there's some stuff to think about in that movie. That wasn't one of them. That just happened. And people watched it and ran with it. So it's like, cool. Yeah, but that ain't got nothing to do with nothing. Nothing. That's to great. Do with I'm looking nothing. at the trailer right now. Look, it looks dope. It looks dope. Yeah, doing I'm, different. I'm just, it looks it looks crazy, absolutely. That's, but um, aliens and horses and Kiki Palmer in the house and Kiki. Right. Yeah, yeah. There's some there's some names in this one, man. So um, well, <laughs> Stephen Brown. Stephen Brown says Jordan Peele. I'm leaving things up for interpretation. Me. So it meant nothing. 
That's funny. <laughs> That's Kenny Carroy's way of watching a movie. My way of watching a movie is believing that he separated the Fruit Loops from uh, the glass of milk to you know, to maintain the 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 white purity of the milk. That's that's we just watch. We just we just we just different. That's all it is. We just different. When, I'm the see, dude Jordan it Peele hates. Over your head. Yeah, that's me. Jordan, it that's even me. went over your head. Yeah. Jordan psychologically left the milk white. <laughs> See, he wasn't even thinking. It was just in his head. He was already thinking there, and it just went out without him even knowing. It's raining well, blood in this movie. This is crazy. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. Uh, Jordan Peele's film films are pretty dope, but man, he might pale in comparison to Paolo Bancaro's film. Oh, hello. Hey. I, 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 I checked Twitter. It, it tried to refrain from firing off a ridiculous Palo Bancaro tweet, uh, <laughs> but saw that Bryant West was working on his draft profile on on Palo Bancaro as well. And I think we're all seeing the same thing, man. He, he He's starting to fall into that category like he's third for real. <laughs> he, he's he's, he's falling in that category of. What are we doing here? Like he's three. <laughs> what are we really doing here? Oh man, this. Uh, uh, I I I I feel like uh, I've been leading some of these some of these uh, uh, dives into film, and you you you've kind of reacted. I, I want to fall back and let you lead this one because this is your guy, and I know there's a line that you like to use with players that was just so glaringly obvious when watching Paolo Bancaro last. Night. Mm, I'm interested because I don't even know what I say. <laughs> He's. I'll, I'll give this one to you, dude. Is a three level score. Oh yeah. Oh my god, oh, man. Yeah. He's and, he's special. So so here here's one of the things because you know I, I hear people talk about it. I, I hear it a number of different times where people are like, you know, the shot. You know, they're kind of iffy on the shot, and you know, if you if you dive into the the numbers, you know, maybe maybe it tells you something differently. When I watch him shoot the basketball from from beyond the arc mm-hmm. i think i feel like it's money i feel like, i feel like he's got he's got that stroke from beyond the arc to 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 hit it consistently what's the beef with the shot the, the release i don't know i, oh. I don't know i don't, it, it, I don't know you i just pointed out say his shot is is you know suspect is hit or miss i don't know i don't see that Oh, oh, his shot in general. I thought I'm sorry. I thought you meant his yeah, shot yeah. mechanics. I'm I'm no, sorry. No, no, just just him being able to shoot from, you know, from three point range. I don't see it. Just just for full disclosure, particularly for the people watching, I've got the film running. I've got the I've got the, I've got the clips running while we're talking. <laughs> so too. if you hear me react, <laughs> oh Oh, that's 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 what's happening. We're, we we still we still have these film edits running, man. He he, he Again, you talk about that three level score, shooting from three, getting to the basket. He, mm-hmm. again, I, you know, Carmelo Anthony is one of the greatest scorers we've ever seen. Right. He's one of the greatest creators we've ever seen. Mm-hmm. And you made that early, you know, comp to him when the college basketball season started. Again, that's, that's extremely high praise. But when you talk about the ability to create a shot and, you know, the, 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 the favorite Kenny Caraway, Caraway line, you talk about the ability to score at three levels. Mm-hmm. Man, he, he checks those boxes. And and like I said, when I say Carmelo, it's it's almost like when people say Jay Ivey, Russell Westbrook, and you mm-hmm. know, put them together. Um, but I'll put it to you like this. From what I've seen, I think Paolo has a better chance of reaching the the Carmelo level than Jaden, no shade to Jaden, than Jaden does of Russell Westbrook and, and Dwayne Way. Mm-hmm. Like Paolo is, and that's that's more of a nod to Paolo, yeah. not a diss of Jaden. Right. I got um, you. This guy, he, he, like I said, I feel like he's not as athletic as as Carmelo was. You know, just not athletically gifted the way Carmelo was. But as far as knowing your spots, as far as being able to shoot over anybody at that particular size and have a consistent jump shot, he's got the goods, man. He's got the goods. Defensively, yeah, it's sure you want, you worry about some stuff defensively. I think we worry about stuff defensively with all these guys coming out of uh, college. There, there's nobody that you're sure about defensively. But here's the thing that I say about Paolo, and this is just kind of the way I look at the draft, 
the way I look at being in a top four, top five position. I hear a lot of times with with uh, people breaking down Jabari Smith Jr., Chet Holmgren, Jaden Ivey, Keegan Murray. They say, you know, he'd be a really good second or third option. Like they, they come with these things where it's like Russell Westbrook. And then they're like, I think he could be a really good second or third player on a playoff team. What? <laughs> Russell Westbrook was the MVP of the league. So if, if you're not talking about he has that type of ceiling, then let's not use Russell Westbrook. Paolo Bancaro, I feel, has the, the skill set and the possibility to be the best player on a playoff team. And if I'm picking in the top three, I got to go with the guy who can be the best player on a champion on on a playoff championship, whatever you want to say, sure. on that type of team. I'd have to go with that. I I honestly don't understand, especially after watching it more, why he's not number one. These other guys yeah. are really good, but they're not they're not talked about as being potential all stars, uh, uh p- potential all NBA guys. People say that with Jabari, and I want to look more into Jamari Jabari stuff too. And, and maybe we I'll have see something. We haven't really dove into Jabari yet. I don't think we've even done the deep dive into Chet. Like we 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 did the highlights on right. Chet. Like we do we did the background. We, we did yeah, we we did the yeah. surface stuff. We we yeah. haven't we haven't gotten into the to the good, bad, and the ugly uh with Chet yet, which only 12, 13 short days till at the draft. Under, at least we're under two uh two weeks. You said you said yeah, it didn't even dawn on me till this morning, Kenny said after the show when the stream cut off. Like let's uh you know we've got some time to fill tomorrow. Oh, let's do Palo. Okay, the hell are we gonna do next week? Mm-hmm. We're gonna do Chet and Jabari. Uh, Chet and Jabari, and then uh, uh, my guy Lester, Lester Quinones. From, from that sounds like one of your soap opera characters. All right, <laughs> we should probably do Dyson Daniels too, based on uh <laughs> what 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 we found out today. We 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 look into that, but um, you mentioned. Uh, Palo on the defensive end. Mm. Again, I don't, I don't know that anyone has stood out like a phenomenal defender in any of these, you know, film sessions that we've had. But it's, you know, we talked about Jaden Ivey fighting through that pick and roll a little bit slow, um, which you, you know that again, pick and roll type stuff over under through a lot of that is dictated uh, by the coach, and it's not necessarily the strong suit of the player. And he's when 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 he's guarding the guy on the uh, the roll on the pick and roll, he can he can fall off a little little too far. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, I I don't know if that's a nitpicking thing or if that's a huge 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 deal, but it stood out like you saw it just like with Jaden Ivey uh, getting off getting getting through those picks slowly. It, it it stood out. That's the same case with Paolo here on the defensive end. It stood out. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, I, I would say the defensive end obviously is is where he needs some work and where, you know, he, he's got to step his game up and, and learn how to play on the NBA level. But I'll say this, and I told you and Jesse this this morning. Paolo is potentially great enough on the offensive end. Or once again, if I'm top three, top two, four, five, mm-hmm. and he's available. I'm taking him, and then I'll figure out the defense around him later. I'll I'll figure it out. I'll go get, you know, my my, my Rob Williams and, and uh, Wiggins. Even though Wiggins was the number one pick, but you know he was an outcast for a long time. Mm-hmm. Otto Porter Juniors, things of that. I'll I'll find people around him to you know kind of help him out or cover up some of his deficiencies on the defensive end. I can't. Like I'll put it to you like this. If you get Chet and Chet is um, great on the defensive end, that's great. That's going to help you out. And I know people think I only look at, at offense. It's not true. You're always in search of a guy that can score. Like if, if they had, for instance, if, um, if the, if the Kings had, uh, you know, I, just Devin Booker. I'm going to just say Devin Booker, the first guy that comes on my guy that can score on all three levels. 
that can give you a guaranteed bucket. Newsflash, I wouldn't keep looking for a Devin Booker. Mm -hmm. I'd be like, all right, now go find your Marcus Smart. You know, somebody that can, you know, defend, you know, go get a rebound or go find, you know, that guy. I'd stop right there because I got him. I got the guy that I need. The problem with the Kings is and why I'm always looking for this guy that can score is because they don't have the guy that can score from three levels. They don't have a guy that you can give the ball to at any point in time in the fourth quarter and say, hey, go score, you know, get into the bucket, go score in the mid range, go hit the step back three. They don't have that. And until they find that, they're going to keep looking for that. So this, my point with that is, even if you guard some, go get somebody like like Chet Holmgren, which is a guy that I like, I wouldn't be mad if they got him at all. You're still going to be in search of a guy like Devin Booker, like Tatum, that can bring you home in these in these moments. Luka Doncic, you know, obviously these are the best scorers in the game. I understand that. But you're still going to be in search of guys like that that can bring you home because Chet's not going to bring you home. You still got a score to win. I've heard that. Yeah, I've heard that. Um, and it, you, I, and you have to be. You'd have to believe Chet is. You know, you go back to this rating scale. You'd have to believe Chet is just a massively better defender than Palaban Caro is to sacrifice all of that offense. Mm -hmm. And that's a tough look. <laughs> like that's yeah. a that's a that I mean. Paolo had like 20 and 10 in the national championship. Like right. Paolo's not like, and, 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 and that's the thing where we get focused on this film. We get focused on these clips. We get focused on, you know, these different things that we're, you know, that we're seeing or that we, you know, we sink ourselves into to either help us form an opinion on a player or validate an opinion that we already have from the season on a player. And we don't know how much of this stuff is going to translate. We also, right. We, I mean, who was the last great defender on Duke? I, Chris Duke right. was he a great defender? I, I, don't I don't know. That, 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 that's, that's, that's what I mean. I don't Wo, know. that. Wojo? Is that, and, is that and, 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 and clearly, Mike Krzyzewski thinks like Kenny does. We've got to get guys who can score for us. We've got to get guys who can bring us home. When it's close in the uh, in the national championship against North Carolina, we've got to find guys that will bring us home. Like we've got to be able to do that. Uh, Mike Brown, on the other hand, steps in day one. It's like, yeah, no, that's great. We've got to go to score here, but we're we're going to do something here defensively, mm -hmm. and we're going to get you into the, these defensive habits that you haven't been in before. Right, All right, and that's and, and a pro look, basketball player now. Exactly, and that's where none of these guys are coming in finished products at, at whatever offense or defense you mm -hmm. know what i mean that's where you have to trust in your staff the people that you have um, in your organization to develop this is where de de uh, developing a player comes into play you know what i mean like you you see what they do very well you see what they do average you see what they don't do well at all and you try to improve those deficiencies and you try to help them out and put them in the best situation possible to um, to highlight the things they do well until they're, you know, you've got them to the point where they can play and they can play in any type of situation in, in any style. It's the plan. Uh, he's a really good passer, too. He's good, uh, man. He's, he got, he's, he's got it, man. He looks like he... Um, he looks like he was born on a basketball court. Yeah. Like, he sees everything. He, his timing is really good. Um, he seems to be really smart in, in terms of basketball IQ and finding, mm -hmm. not just finding the right guy, but finding the right guy at the right time. That mm -hmm. really stands out when you, yo, he can find guys above the rim too, pretty regularly he out there. Like it's Tyrese to Rashawn. Right. He can find right. guys at the basket, you know, given the fact that he's a four and he's often pulled away from the basket. He find guys, he can find guys at the rim a lot. Yeah. And, and I look at him, when you talk about what he can do and then when you talk about the fit, like people worry about the fit and everything. I think there's, there's a lot to his game. That would be a great fit for the Sacramento Kings. Oh, I absolutely. feel like he can be a stretch for somebody where you go four in one out, unless the bonus do whatever you talked about his IQ and understanding the, and understanding the game. I think he would understand how to cut and play out Sabonis. Mm -hmm. You know, be a guy that uh, Fox can kick out to or, or a finisher or something like that. 
I think he has that to his game. So I think he'd be an excellent fit as well. I feel like he'd almost like people talk about Keegan Murray. Um, he's like Keegan Murray on steroids. <laughs> yeah, I'm with, like no, about it's, it's he's Keegan, and, and we love Keegan Murray. Mm-hmm. We we talked about him the other day. Very good player. Yeah. This guy's Keegan Murray on steroids. We're also, I think, kind of scarred by, you know, I, th- I think we harp so much on what can this guy do defensively. Oh, if you got a liability at the four and you already have got Stabantis Sabonis, who's not the greatest defender, man, what, what are we going to be? I think there's one really important thing we've got to remember about why this, this defense has been so bad over the last couple of years. You had guys on the team that weren't committed to playing defense. You had guys on the team who couldn't remember what they were supposed to do defensively. Right. And if you've got, or you've got guys who just weren't bought into what you were doing, period. And the fact that you've got those guys out of there, even if you're not all great individual defenders, but what's the old line, the, the, the playing on a string, mm-hmm. if you're all in sync with what each other's doing, you, you, you don't have to be Marcus Smarts and Draymond Greens out there. That alone to me gets you up to the, average category that alone to me gets you out of the well just don't be awful category that boosts you up 10 spots just the fact that Sabonis knows what in in, for sake of the discussion Paolo Bancaro is doing and Fox is up top and he knows what Bancaro and Sabonis are doing and you've got Harrison Barnes and and, and Dante DiVincenzo for sake of conversation. Right. You've got guys all over the floor who know where they're supposed to be, who know what they're supposed to do. And when a play develops, they know how they're supposed to react. Absolutely. It, we're we're so like I I think we feel like we've got a we 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 we've got to have this whole house built by by game number 1. Like man, yeah. we we, we we're gonna be painting some stuff come come December. Like, we, 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 shoot, we might have to remodel house. something in February. Yeah. I hate painting the house, by the way. I really do. Well, it's because you have a big house and like I'll you've got to paint again. You had to paint that fence, didn't you? I had to paint that fence. Yeah. I painted all the ceilings in this house, all oh, the walls when we first moved. Yeah, no, I'm done. I'll never want to see another paintbrush again in life. Wow. Okay. Well, I'm finished. No, no paintbrushes for Kenny. The Kings until, they, until I'm asked to paint something. <laughs> here, okay, by, and what you mean is till you're told to paint something is 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 what you actually mean. But the Kings, they might have to paint a room here as the season moves along. They might have to remodel the bathroom come 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 February. The house isn't going to be perfect day number one. There's going to be some things they've got to figure out. You got to put the furniture in the right places. You got to mount the TV in the right spot. All of that stuff is going to be figured out. Once you get the house, like yes. once you're once once you've got everybody in place and you can and, and you can start moving forward, you could build out something nice here. Uh, oh. But to think that you have to draft an all elite defender for this team to be better defensively, right. I don't think is accurate. And it's all. and it's not even realistic. Like you're not getting that. These it's guys certainly. are 19 yeah. years old. Like you're yeah. you're not going to get these guys that are going to come in day one and be these top flight league changing defenders. Davion Mitchell is one of the great uh perimeter defenders we've seen in a long time. And he didn't come in and change the the fortunes uh, of of the Kings defensively. He still needed like you said there needed upgrades around him to, you know, kind of uh, magnify in a positive way the things that he was able to do and we're still looking for that. Mm-hmm. So yeah, man. I I look at this whole thing, man. And I'm convinced now, and I, we've got James Ham coming at 3 o'clock. I'd love to hear what he's got to say. If there was a way to move up, and move up and, and take Paolo. You moved to number two for Paolo? I'd move to number Just two Just to Paolo. assure that you get him? Yeah. Yeah. I'd move to – because I don't think he gets past number three personally. There's no way he does. I, There's I just care. no way. I think Chet would fall to four before Paolo would. I, I, th- I thought the same thing. Uh, Paolo is not falling. There's look, we're not scouts. We don't get paid to to tell teams what to do. There's no way. <laughs> like, there's just no way he's falling. Nah, um, I'd go up and get him. I they I I, I I'm I'm all for that. And uh, our guy, I'm all for that. Let's see the AZ AZ one attic at two. You don't draft Paolo. I don't understand. I don't understand. Well, okay, that who do you? I, I I really don't. 
Because he probably, to me, and, and Damian may feel the same way. Jesse talked about it earlier. He probably should be the first pick in the draft. So what you mean that two you don't draft? Hello. That's that, <laughs> because it's so significantly higher than three. I, I'm 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 curious. Uh, uh, elaborate in the chat. Uh, <laughs> YouTube.com slash ESPN 1320. And by the way, <laughs> fam, you you clearly have not watched. <laughs> that, that, that's way that's that that is that is way too. Div- he He's basically Jabari. Jabari ain't gonna be there. Uh, no. Yeah. Sass says Chet over follow. Man, I, I need th- this ain't working. No, this doesn't work. Tripping, man. I need I need someone to call and and explain <laughs> Chet over Palo Bancaro to me. Now again, the deep dive into Chet's coming next week. Yeah, but I I just I need I need someone to call and use their words and explain why you go Chet over Palo. What are Palo's flaws? That's what I need to hear. Palo, we'll ask James Palo. that same thing. Think James been a uh, team chat for a long time. And you said it. We're going to look at Chet. We're going to look at Jabari. We're going to look at our guy Lester, um, and, and, and from Memphis as well. So there's still some work to be done. I ain't seen a better prospect in this draft than, than Palo Bancaro. Same. I haven't seen one. We'll come back. Uh, there's a lot. KC mock draft 3.0. Yes, sir. We got that coming up here on Sacramento's number one sports station, ESPN 1320. Oh, I don't see it, guys. I don't know what y'all talking about, man. Yeah. I'm not seeing it like you guys are. No. Hell no. <laughs> Especially this Saturday. No, thank it's gonna you. Like, it's gonna be like a million degrees. Yeah, not concerned about that at all. That's really no big deal. That that's. Mm-hmm. Was that yeah. when he caught cramps in San Antonio? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's all timer. And the big, I, my favorite was the the big dramatic shoot around. Where he comes out and he's got like six bottles, <laughs> six different bottles of, you know, fluids that he's like, there's water, there's coconut water, there's whatever his, <laughs> you know, sports drink endorsement was. There's, you know, it, and, and, and it's right there. So all of the cameras can see him. That's that was my favorite. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, it was like mm-hmm. super hot. Yeah. Emil Trill, like. I hesitate to say like what I've been saying, you know, I want to, I want to get an accurate comp, but I've said since the first time I saw him at Duke, I've said Carmelo Anthony, I'll look for a more recent person to, you know, maybe give a, cause like I said, Carmelo's Damien's mentioned, he's one of the greatest players that ever played a game. I don't know. I'm not sitting here saying Paolo's going to be that, but that's what he reminded me of at Duke the first time I saw him. NBA, I don't, Rick. Oh, quick, yeah. I don't understand this one either. Chet is a better fit next to Sabonis. That doesn't mean I'm saying Chet is a bad fit, but how is he better than Paolo? A better fit. Sabonis works the, the block. Paolo's up there is the is the stretch four, who can score in a variety of different ways. Defensively, yeah, Chet's a better uh, rim protector, but it's also like people say that. It's not like Sabonis is going to be out there guarding uh, fours at the three. He ain't going to be guarding threes out there. Sabonis is going to be your guy that's going to be closer to the basket, I believe. Plus, he's your best rebounder. You don't – he's going to be the one inside. So, if you got Chet Holmgren in there, defensively, I'm not I'm not specifically seeing the fit that everybody else is seeing with Sabonis. Man, Melo had it all. You mean in mm-hmm. Syracuse? Uh, oh, he was probably a little more finesse. Like if he got a smaller guy on him, he 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 knew how to you know muscle up on the block and, and do stuff that way. But he was he was more of this mid range jump shot, this three ball, things of that nature. He was he wasn't a he wasn't a guy that um you know pounded the paint or something like that.
No, Mark, that's we, I, I, I thought we were pretty clear with that. You move up to get Paolo. He's, I think we just screamed he's not going to drop. I don't know what you mean. Is this to push views? Like, no, we we said repeatedly <laughs> he's not going to drop. <laughs> Come on, man, you got to pay attention. <laughs> better than that, Mark. You better than that. No, the belief. Uh, where'd you go, Ray? The be- oh, by the way, Rory, I saw your question earlier. No, we can't show the film on um on YouTube. Um, bro. If we draft Chet, no, I think the idea is Chet's the power forward, Sabonis is the center. That, that reminded me, sitting there listening to my guys, Fontaine yeah. Busher, and uh, just just played about a minute and a half of some song. Just, nah, nah, don't, just play it. Don't matter. Must be nice to be in don't, San Francisco. Don't, don't mean a damn thing. Just play the whole damn album, actually. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> the truth is, though, oh, all right, not that important. That beat what? goes so hard. Oh, my oh, yeah, gosh. That's, <laughs> that's nasty. I appreciate in Straight Out of Compton how they tried to show him like making the beat like that's like let's not do that like he didn't make this beat like he produced it like he he, he produced the beat that was already made like have, let's not do that have you seen I, I wish i'm sure it's not hard to find but i i saw somebody step by step go through making the maybach music um or ashton martin music beat and it was fascinating to watch it all come mm-hmm. together. I think I seen uh, Manny Fresh. He showed how he made uh, back that ass up. He showed how he made that beat, but just step by step by step. And it's those things are fascinating to watch to me. Yeah, man, it's it's I, I love watching great producers uh, go to work. I got to <laughs> I got to an interesting part of the the, the book I'm listening to, the Big Payback about the history of hip hop. Got to 1990. 1990 was a seminal year for hip hop. Mm. That was the year Please Hammer Don't Hurt Him came out. I knew you were going to say Hammer. I, <laughs> I knew you were going to say Hammer. <laughs> but remember, it wasn't just Please Hammer Don't Hurt Him that came out. Mm. To the Extreme came out also. Who's to Vanilla the Extreme? Vanilla Ice. Oh, my God. Vanilla Ice. And, and, and so, I mean, you, you shake your head at it. One sold 10 million, one sold 7 million. No, I know, I know. And, and there was like a... There, you, know, you know, we were talking about the, uh, well, at least they didn't put License to Ill as the number one hip hop album of all time. There yeah. were hip hop people, Source Magazine, a great example of this is this is not a representation of hip hop. Mm. Please Hammer Don't Hurt Him is about to be the biggest selling hip hop album of all time. And we don't mm. know a single person who's bought it because mm. it was pop and it was the crossover to yeah. pop but what stood out what well, you know, we were talking about that beat right there from uh nothing but a g thing and you know please hammer don't hurt him had two singles drop and nobody cared hmm. and then you can't touch this came out and the reason yeah, you can't touch this resonated yeah, yeah. is because people knew they heard it before right like oh this is this is oh, okay this is the rick james song yeah, was that the birth of sampling right there it was, oh no, it definitely wasn't the birth. No, I mean chic good times is rapper's yeah, delight. True, 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 true. Um, but Super Freak wasn't a huge hit. It because, wasn't no, because they still because because Super either. Freak came out when Station still like uh, didn't really want to play black music. So so essentially, Super Freak got bigger after you can't touch this. That's right. Wow. Yeah, I never knew like that. it was. It was yeah. known enough. Like it. Like it was. It's not like you know. It, it, it wasn't. A, it, it was. It, it was a record that charted. Right. But I think we look at that as this massive hit from Rick Chang. No, it was a record that record charted. Too, yeah. yeah. Like it was like oh okay. No, it became a significantly bigger record after hmm. you can't touch this came out. Wow. I could imagine. Interesting. I, I could imagine at that time, people in hip hop being really worried about the the genre like the people in hip-hop like your you know your, your russell simmons you know your rick rubens and stuff like that and, and maybe guys even deeper than your krs ones being really worried 
about hip hop because of the success of Hammer Vanilla Ice. Oh, absolutely. It's like, yo, you're going to wipe out this genre of music that we created mm-hmm. and you're going to well, you're going to make it something that is not and you're going to you're going to wipe out true hip- I could just imagine that time true hip hop. That was the feeling, but they were far more concerned about Vanilla Ice than they were about Hammer. <laughs> With Hammer they were like, okay, this is pop. And mm-hmm. I th- they I think they called it hip hop. Mm-hmm. instead of hip hop they've called they called it hip hop but with vanilla ice they were like okay here they come mm. and this is this is we've seen this before they this is what they're going to do they're going to they're going to em- they're going to embrace this and this is this is going to make them comfortable right. and you know, like like there was an influx but like what what was the group uh third base like there was there was there was a few but yeah. nothing you know nothing like nothing crazy that did wound up destroying the entire genre yeah wow i knowing what i know now the age that i am the the level of awareness now i i'd be furious at vanilla ice <laughs> when it came out today i'd be like the haircut all of it, get get away this is this is i see what you're doing and i don't like it <laughs> yeah i mean i i i, I hear from a hip-hop perspective i hear you from a pop perspective, yeah. it's undeniable. Like he's, yo, dude, dude makes a living as Vanilla Ice today, bro. He was massive because was of that. Ma- that song was massive. He, he like he he'll he'll inevitably we'll see him at some point at the Golden <laughs> One Center. We gonna see him, but like he, yeah, like he he he's he's made a living off of. I mean, he he went you know. That gave him the ability to do other things, right? Whether it was cool as ice or the ninja rap, or it was the you know, the ninja rock band rap, thing that he did. Lie, man. Ninja rap, I was like, oh, this gotta go hard. Ninja rap, go ninja, go ninja. They're telling the story now in this book. The book's <laughs> called The Big Payback of how KMEL became what mm-hmm. it is mm-hmm. and used to be like it used to be a rock station, and how this young programmer. Uh, came in and he had this vision and this idea and he he like changed everything and that introduced us to like KMEL was the first station to break wild thing they were the mm. first thing obviously they broke too short uh digital underground like mm. they were the first to break like a lot of hip-hop records like stations that were playing rap would like also play like like 80s music that sounded soulful Mm-hmm. Right, like they mm-hmm. play Hall and Oats or something that could pass, <laughs> right? Like he passed with some blue eyed soul, like that. That that, that slide right. under, that'd be like that's all right. Yeah, he was like, "No, nah, we're getting rid of that. We're, we're 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 not doing any of that. We're we're playing just this." Mm-hmm. And it's it's I I love hearing the origin stories of all of this. That's that's the, I gotta I gotta check that out. You listen, you're listening to that, right? Mm-hmm. Or you? Yeah, it? no, I'm listening to it. I might I'm I'm listening have to, to it. Check that out as well. Did you have um? Did you have and did you like the funky head hunter? I had the funky head hunter. Um, <laughs> hey, it got away, got hard. The funky <laughs> head hunter kind of hard. <laughs> was that pumps and a bump and it's all pumps good? And it's all yeah. good. And he had uh what's it was the, it was okay. Oh damn, you know about my city. It oh, was damn, so city what threw people off is like I had let's get it started too. Mm, the funky mm. headhunter was closer to let's get it started yeah please hammer don't hurt him was the that was the different <laughs> yeah that was that had all the earth wind and fire that had earth wind and fire all over oh, it yeah, that I had uh 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 on your face is an earth wind wind and fire record too mm. and of course um rick james yeah so it had like that more soulful sound to it whereas let's get it started that was, that was a hip hop record. Right. Turn this mother out. That's a hip hop record. They put me in the mix, ring them. That's a hip hop record. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it might be a cheesy hip hop record, but Pumps in a Bump, like that's what it is. That's a hip hop record. Pumps in a Bump was a smash. If I'm out this weekend and I hear Pumps in a Bump, I'm getting hyped. <laughs> that's a smash. We'll get to, I, I got one more note for you. We'll get to Casey's mock draft in a second. Two Live Crew, where are they from? Miami. They're from Southern California. So I did see this. What one of the guys is from Southern California, right? The the group without Luke. Luke, Luke went out and recruited him, right? No, or, or no, they came from LA to Miami. They came from LA. Yeah. 
because their records were moving so well mm-hmm. in Miami that they went to Miami. That's where they hooked up with Luther Campbell and they never left. Right. I do and that, that sound, yeah. like they were producing a sound that was a little bit different than the other stuff in LA and Miami was gravitating to it. That what that that's what became the Miami sound was actually born in Southern California. That's right. That's right. I remember. And I, 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 I was rewinding that. Like, did they just say the two live crews from Southern California? Like, wait a minute. And then it gets, yeah, they, 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 remember, they were pushing records in Miami. They went out there, they met Luther Campbell. And I remember seeing that on the doc that I still haven't finished and far pop evolution. Finishing. Yeah. But I remember, I thought it, you're right. It's the whole group. I thought it was just one of them, but yeah, it's, it's, it's the whole group. Yeah. Here. The whole group is there. Yeah. Luther Campbell is Luke Skywalker. He's from, mm-hmm. He's from Miami, right? But they weren't like a click at the beginning. Mm-hmm. They moved out there. That's where they hooked up. And as nasty as I want to be, was born. Mm. Sounds like uh, sounds like some kind of podcast or something that should be put together. I mean, you got so much knowledge. You know, we got so much something. Something there. Something there. <laughs> I, I I can't lie. I've, I've, I I dove into the notes app. <laughs> So I'm there. Took some I just, ideas. You know, yeah, I'm thinking like once a week. You know, we just I don't know. I mean, I mean, I'm saying too much as it is. I'm saying too much. We, we, I don't know talk. if Joe's listening. I mean, I know all the managers are together right now. I mean, I'm just saying we just. just I mean, I, if y'all I, like money, y'all had D'Lo and Casey do a podcast that's for you. What I'm just saying. saying. I mean, I'm just, if you don't like money. Know, you know, I think you know, and I think we could make a three headed monster here. You know, throw me in there or something like that, and we get we, this popping. We need to be on KSFM. I just think that's what this all boils down to. <laughs> Both, both, by the way. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. (laughs) Mia, Mia, D-Lo, Casey, and Casey in the morning. Um, You're listening to D-Lo and Casey on ESPN. You're working a real work day. (laughs) Eight hours? What? (laughs) Man, if you're working eight hours, imagine what I'm doing. You're listening to D-Lo and Casey on ESPN 1320. I told you, Odyssey's trying to kill me. KIFM, West Sacramento, KRXQ, HD2 Sacramento, an Odyssey station. And driven by our friends over at Lasher's Elk Grove Dodge. We're live on Twitch. We're live on YouTube, Facebook Live. Um, no Trista Crick today. Uh, she's busy fighting everyone. Uh, the Kyle Matson will be with us. I, I could not wait to talk to Trista. We're gonna have to send her a text though and let her know that we're yeah. we're, we're we're rocking with her. Uh, we, Kyle we, Matson will be with us. With we rock. We, look, we rocking with her. We rocking with Butch, man. You know, we we. Hey, these are our people. We said it last week. I think these are our people. All of them. I think Butch. I think Butch is a little on edge, though. Well, look, I'll tell you this. I think Butch is on edge. I, I'll say this: he probably is. But if somebody came talking about, uh, did you see the fights that I didn't picked since <laughs> since I didn't got the show? Somebody comes in talking about Sacramento. I'm riding for Sacramento. So I get it. I understand. I get it. <laughs> Still funny. Oh, it's hilarious. But I get it. I mean, my people, I'll say, you guys chill out. Chill out. All right, let's chill out. Let's, let's go and get together and have some McQueen. All right, let's relax. McQueen and the Violet Fog, the smoothest gin in the world, handcrafted in Brazil. Um, Casey's Mock Draft 3.0. Yes, sir. Yes, We're sir. a day late. I don't, know, I don't know why we fell off yet. We got I, really know, busy we yesterday. We talked about it uh, yesterday after the show, and I was like, oh, I've got to do the Mock Draft. It's Thursday. <laughs> well, we just, we, like, we... We 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 had Bryant on like the show the show just was like riding yesterday and it, it was hey let's do it tomorrow mm-hmm. here we are mock draft three point um on the when I give you guys the sheet I'll give you the whole lottery will be lottery will be there for Will Z but we we're just gonna do top ten on the air okay um, number ten st- there's not a lot of changes here I, I haven't seen much over the last week that has me changing what's gonna happen what I think is gonna happen. Um, for this draft. So we we still got uh, Jalen Duran at 10. Dyson Daniels has moved into the top 10. I got him nine uh, okay. going to San Antonio. That's where Johnny Davis was going before. Uh, I, I got San Antonio taking Dyson Daniels. Number eight, A.J. Griffin. Number seven, uh, Benedict Mather. And that has stayed the same. Number six, a little slip. Got Shaden Sharp. Now going number six to oh, Indiana. Oh, boy. Yeah, man. Wow. And you know what? I actually AC has left the building. I actually thought about dropping them even even fur, further past Indiana because they got Duarte. And I'm like, well, I don't know if they're gonna, you know, do Shaden Sharp and Duarte, but I feel like if Shaden is there at six, I think they they take a shot on him for sure. 
Um, that means I got Keegan Murray going at five. Still got Jaden Ivey going four, Paolo three, Chet two, and Jabari one. So okay. that's what's going on. Casey's yeah. mock draft 3.0. I, look, I'm not really the type that jumps off the deep, deep end. You know what I mean? Like, they're, they're, they don't even like water. <laughs> this, is, this is a fact. The beach is going to be popping this, uh, this weekend, too, by the way. What's the little beach name again? I always forget. Anybody know? Uh, I don't remember either. Oh, but yeah, the beach is gonna be crazy down there. You won't see me getting into that river. That that thing, that current be moving. But um, yeah, man. I right now, unless I hear some concrete stuff, and I talk to some people or whatever the case may be, nobody can definitively tell me, hey, this trade is happening or this team is moving up or whatever the case may be. I'm not just gonna throw Eason in the top seven just to make a change on the mock draft. That's not really my bag. But um, there's a couple of things that I saw, though. There is a couple of things. I think Shaden, whether that's the right move or not, I feel like he is dropping down some people's boards. I don't think he gets out of the top 10 by any means. Um, yeah. Matter of fact, he got inv- invited to the, the green room. He was one of the first people to get invited to the green room by the NBA. So he ain't dropping out of the top 10. But remember when this all started, I had him at four. So mm-hmm. there's that. Yeah. And, you know, Kenny, this isn't a work if – if he thought he was four, he gonna be four. If we're doing five of the exact same mock drafts, uh, that's what we would do. I found a, I found, I discovered. I'm Chris, Christopher Columbus here. No one else saw this. Okay, I, 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 I came across the interesting piece on ESPN Plus about ranking the top thirty prospects based on stats and scouting. Hmm. All right, this is this is Kevin Pelton's work. Okay, uh, I like Kevin Pelton. Yeah, me too. Um, my projections, this is a, a quote from the article. My projections translate performance in NCAA Division I and other leagues to an NBA equivalent and then adjust for age and position to project value over a player's next five seasons. Hmm. Lastly, I add in ranking in the top 100 uh, for the best consensus projection. Um, so there's a little background. I'll, I'll leave the numbers out of it because it gets a little convoluted here. But number one is Chet Holmgren. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. It's fine. It's not, not, a, not a big deal. Number two is Jabari Smith. Again. Okay. Mm-hmm. Not a big deal. Number three. Is Keegan Murray. Wow. Um, although Murray is old for a second-year player, he'll t- turn 22 in August. He was productive enough last season to easily outweigh that, one of the most versatile scores in college hoops. Uh, he throws out some numbers along with Holmgren. And along with Holmgren, Murray is the other player in the top five of both ESPN's top 100 and my stats-only projections. So Keegan Murray uh, at number three, three. A.J. Griffin, number four. Wow, jeez. Wait, what? AJ Griffin at number four. So I'm going to scroll, 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 and get to Shaden Sharp, who's at number 10. Top 30 projections here. Uh-huh. Paolo Bancaro, number 11. Wow, that's bizarre. That really is bizarre. While the other two top prospects in this year's rankings are 1-2 overall in the consensus projections, Ben Carroll falls outside the top 10 because of his unspectacular stats-only projection. Ben Carroll wasn't as efficient as Holmgren and Smith. He was more accurate on long twos than Smith, but not nearly as good from three-point range. Improvement there will help Ben Carroll become an elite scorer. He could also stand to improve his impact on defense. Number 12, top 30 projections here from Kevin Pelton on ESPN, is Jaden wow. Ivey. You said, where did you say Paolo was? 11. They're 11 and 12. So, wow. so, so yeah, 10 is Shaden, 11 is Paolo, 12 is Jaden Ivey. Here's what he wrote about Jaden Ivey. Mm. If I had to bet on one player to outperform their projection, it would be Ivey who was a part-time starter with a 497 true shooting percentage as a freshman and before blossoming 
uh, as a sophomore. There's a long track record for quick guards proving more effective with NBA floor spacing, particularly when they can threaten defenses with their shooting. Uh, Ivy, who hit 36% of his threes last season, could well qualify. Hmm. Well, it was interesting. I mean, I, yeah, I don't disagree with the assessment of somebody like Jaden Ivy. Jaden Ivy, he's he dope. <laughs> you know, I, I love Jaden Ivy. Uh, but the Paolo, eh, I don't see it that way. I really don't. <laughs> I think, I think he is. <clears throat> I think he's the real deal. I think what was we spent the whole segment talking about, but yeah, yeah. I, I I don't I don't agree with that assessment. I think what was so surprising about seeing Paolo down there is like, okay, if you have Chet at number one, that's fine. You're normally seeing Chet number one or number two in a mock draft. Mm -hmm. You have Jabari number two, all right. You're normally seeing Jabari at number one or number two in a mock draft. Paolo was really the outlier here. Like even right. for Keegan Murray to move up to three in 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 this projection again this isn't a mock draft this is this is an analytics thing that that kevin pelton does mm -hmm. he's still moving up from what at what i get he he could only be moving up one in terms of draft projection which mm -hmm. would be in line with uh uh chet and and and, and jabari but the fall off for palo bancaro and even for jay Ivey is really surprising yeah, it's, it's it's interesting to see those guys having that type of ranking in this, and then see them both no lower than four in in every mock draft. Mm -hmm. So, I I yeah I, I don't I don't I don't agree with that at all. Yeah, <laughs> I, I mean I'm not even I'm not seeing that one. And like I said, Pelton, we we like him, good guy. He's he's got his. Yeah, th th these are th he he right he he often writes in a world that's not this is this is Will Z's world. Mm -hmm. That's why we have Will Z because right. he lives in this world. We do not live here. We come over to Will Z's house once in a while. He lets us in, you know, serves us, you know, some some McQueen in the Violet Falls, some Luke Belair, and and we keep it moving. This analytic stuff is not our house. Kevin Pelton obviously uses a, a, a variety of different formulas. I I love the shade and sharp. Uh, right up. Yeah, what do you say about Shane? Uh, his Sharp's projection is based off 12 games for You Play Canada in the 2021 <laughs> Nike EYBL competition. Uh, it's unusual for players to play EYBL the year before they enter the draft, but uh, both Sharp and Jalen Duran fit that category this year because they reclassified after EYBL play. Um, Sharp was one of the best players in EYBL. Uh, let's find some negatives here. Sharp was particularly sure-handed for a high score, committing just 1.5 turnovers per game. However, his low steal rate uh, helps produce a good but not great statistical projection. Again, not a big sample size with Shaden Sharp, but that's what he used to form this projection. Hmm. Yeah, I disagree with the numbers there. My eyes tell me something different. Well, I don't know that you can disagree with numbers. No, no, numbers are what they are. Well, you no, just don't say, agree with what you see, or you, you, the numbers, numbers don't match up with what you see. Yeah. Well, when I say numbers, the only numbers I'm talking about is the rankings. Yeah, that's that's, <laughs> that, that's it. That's really, a, the stats. Those stats I, are the stats. But yeah, that, I mean, where was no. Dyson Daniels? I think was five. Yeah, he was he was five on this ranking. Wow. Wow. Dyson Daniels, he's moving up on people's lists. And Dyson this is, this is, cool, is, this, is a, this is an interesting write-up. The contributions made by Jalen Green and Jonathan Kaminga as rookies have validated G League Ignite as a path to the NBA. Daniels should follow in their footsteps as a lottery pick during the G League showcase. Daniels rated as more valuable than either Green or Kaminga uh, in the 2021 bubble season thanks to his 56% accuracy on two-point attempts and an assist rate. Second on the team behind Scoot Henderson, who is eligible for the 2023 draft. Hmm. Interesting notes. I mean, I, I, you know, this is all different ways to look at a draft that's 12 freaking days away. And I saw yeah. this and saw, you know, Shade and Palo and, and particularly Jay and Ivy in, in double digits and thought, okay, this will be interesting to bring up. It's very interesting to bring up because I don't agree. And I don't understand how any of it works, but Kevin Pelton, a smart writer, very smart writer, uh, smart Very, writer, and, and and 
like I said, maybe just stalling out uh, Pelton because I, I like his work, but all he's doing is going off what the numbers seem to point out, not what he thinks or what he you know sees on the court, nothing like that. Just a pure numbers ranking right up, correct? Correct. Yeah. 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 So. Uh, home, uh, as far as ch- uh, the write up on Chet Holmgren, Holmgren figures to make a big impact at both ends, mm. uh, even if he's not the kind of dominant creator who usually ranks the top draft boards. Uh, the one minor concern about Jabari Smith as a top prospect is his solid but unspectacular efficiency. Okay. To become the dominant scorer, he's got the potential to be. Smith will have to turn more of his long two attempts into threes, uh, which he made it a 42% clip. Takes a lot of long twos. Long contested twos off the bounce, too, for no reason. I do remember seeing that about him a lot when I watched Auburn play. We'll come back. We'll see. Our brother Bruce, excuse me. Brother Bruce, indeed. Brother Bryce also. I I saw all them picks of Bryce. That's definitely Brother Bryce out there. No (laughs) question about that. Uh, We'll come back. 916-349-1320 if you want to get in on the conversation. We'll continue to talk NBA, including like a couple of stories that I feel like might be flying a little bit under the radar. Is No, we're excited about the draft. Free agency isn't that far away. Mm -hmm. Uh, We'll talk about that as D-Lo and Casey continue here on Sacramento's number one sports station, ESPN 1320. Do what Jack says. Hit the like button, please. Hit the like button. Hit the like button. He's a good call, Roy. You're a stats guy, too. It's good stuff. Good stuff, good stuff. Same, man. Same on ice. Once again, oh cranberry, all of it is just an educated guess because we all you think you know, but you don't know, and you never will. That clip sounds like it's from the sixties. <laughs> yeah, like it's on a like it's on a record. I didn't even have my iPad on all day. What's up with that? Uh, I this it this uh, it's raw. It's Kane and the Undertaker. This I think this is Ministry of Darkness. Undertaker. Mm. They're beating up Austin. Big Show is just face planted in the ring. I don't, I don't, it looks like he's dead. I don't, I don't know what's going on. I think, no, that wouldn't, 99, that wouldn't add up. So I, okay, so I think this is leading into that SummerSlam 99 where it's, it's Austin, Triple H, and then somehow Mankind gets inserted in there. Um, Jesse Ventura. <laughs> Oh, they really did. They really did hang the big boss man. That was crazy. They just they hung the big boss man, and then the next day he just showed up back on TV <laughs> with the Ministry of Darkness. <laughs> like it's all good. Oh, oh, I got you, Cole. <clears throat> Come on! Hell no! Don't do that. <laughs> Don't do that. Oh, man. As they I'm going to do my podcast. <laughs> I don't do that nearly as good as you do. Um, <laughs> I know we all also have to be prepared for if they win. Like, we, we just, we're going to have to deal with more Draymond Green. I'm already telling them right now. If they win... And he puts up eight and six, bro. He's not getting a bunch of credit for me, bro. I'm not going to talk about how he changed the game. Not from you, but the Athletic is going to devote their whole website (laughs) to Draymond Green. Uh, 
Uh, the McMahon in every corner, that was different. The McMahon in every corner was WrestleMania 2000. Uh, Austin didn't turn heel. Well, Austin wasn't even in that match. He was injured at the time. I know this very well because I was there. And that mm. WrestleMania was ass, with, with, with few exceptions. But I went for the sole purpose of seeing The Rock win the WWF championship. But, of course, Triple H had to retain. <laughs> they, like, they closed a WrestleMania with Triple H keeping the WWF championship. Like, mm -hmm. I'm at the only WrestleMania ever where the fans didn't go home happy. They try to send fans home happy for all WrestleMania, except that one. They were like, fuck the fans. You know? <laughs> and, of course, The Rock wins it the next month. It's like, man, screw you guys. <laughs> oh, man. Michael Cole on the call. Vintage <laughs> oh Draymond. God. Oh, I didn't know this was a thing. Is he shopping his memoir? Oh, boy. Oh, Vinny. Oh, Vinny. Somebody asked. I'd be earlier. curious. I'd read it. I'd listen to it. Oh, there it is. I see it right here. I was just I was just trying to think. Are we talking about remakes? I was like, where was who remade this? This is how we do it, Montel Jordan. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Uh New York's post page six reports that Vince McMahon is shopping a memoir to publishers this week. Okay, Vince. A source told page six that the book is essentially McMahon's memoir about building the WWE. Hmm. I'd read it. I'd read it with the belief that it's a work. You don't think he'd give anything real in there? I think he'd give some real, but not real, real. Hmm. I just think there are some things we'll never know. What's what's something that you think we'll never know? Uh, I mean, I like I I'm I'm curious to know if he'll. Well, there are some things like he probably can't avoid right he's gonna have to write about the night owen hart died right why he has to write why he went on with the show mm -hmm. then he's got to write about the night chris benoit killed his whole family uh, and why he went on tv end. half teary-eyed uh because he he wasn't aware of what happened yet like you've got to write about those things you, you you've got to write about like was it a systematic plan to destroy every wrestling company in the country as you were building the WWE, like was like, did, was, was that your intent or is that just wound up being what happened? And I he's always been, about that. I, he's always been honest in the sense of my dad wouldn't have sold me the company if he knew what I was going to do. Mm. Like I broke all of the rules. Like you were supposed to stay in a certain area. I was, I was never going to do that. Does he, does he say he regrets that at all? No. Why would what he? One of the he things I do no reason for him to regret it. One of the things I do think I wonder in hindsight if he regrets destroying WCW. Well, I don't think he destroyed WCW. He just bought they, it. They yeah, they had their hand in. They 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 did their thing too. I mean, it was it was eliminating them, I should say. Now you get all the money and you get now obviously you don't apologize for that, but as the the industry as a whole. I think it's better with, with two two top dogs. There is, but WCW wasn't really a top dog anymore. Like it had true. fallen off. Like he had the Very like true. think about like, do you know what he bought WCW for? Have you ever mm -hmm. heard that? Mm -hmm. He bought uh, uh, essentially what amounts to like a handful of contracts that he didn't have to pay unless he wanted to. Uh rings, like souvenir memorabilia type stuff, and then the tape collection. For two million dollars, the tape. He bought that entire company for two million. Like that's crazy. Two years prior to the company selling, it had been like it had been valued at like eighty to a hundred million dollars. Wow. He bought it for two. Like that's how quickly like the whole thing fell apart. But yeah. it's clear, I think, today he doesn't regret that because he tries to exercise some of the same practices that he did with WCW with AEW. Hmm. 
And while, it, it, you know, he, he they did the NXT thing where the shows were competing on a Wednesday night, like he still has that same, he still operates from the same playbook. And to me, Vince is at the point where he doesn't have to do that because WWE has hit that, that, that stage where people say like, yo, uh, can I get a Kleenex? Kleenex is a brand of tissues. People will say, can I get a Coke? Well, we don't have Coke. We have Pepsi. No, I, I really just want a soda. Mm-hmm. Coke has become like a, 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 a line Andy. for a soda. No one ever goes, no one, even on TNT, their own network, if Draymond Green clotheslined Tatum tonight, Mike Breen isn't going to go, oh, that's a, they, Draymond Green acting like it's AEW out here. Right. No, he's not. He's going to say, oh, this turned into a WWE match because mm-hmm. WWE has become synonymous with wrestling. They are wrestling. That's yeah. and that's and that's what Vince McMahon built. Like it was not that before Vince McMahon purchased I, the WWE. I, I do wonder, and we've talked about this before, and then we'll get back to all the other stuff. But I do wonder what it's going to look like when he's not there anymore. I'm not trying Me to too. kill him off, but well, he's tried to kill I, himself I off many times. <laughs> he tried to blow up a limo. He, he fooled. Uh, <laughs> The, the, old, the old old Trump Trump called and was like, "Are you okay? Or <laughs> what's going on? Do you know Trump? This is this is this is a wrestling relate. So the guy who called yesterday to say stick to sports, uh, don't 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 get your underwear in a bunch here. This is about wrestling. Do you know that Donald Trump once tanked the WWE stock because they did that angle where Donald Trump bought Raw." <laughs> and the investors thought he really they didn't realize it was a work to set up right. the hair versus hair match at yeah. WrestleMania 20 something. <laughs> they announced that Donald Trump has bought Monday Night Raw, essentially buying a show and the stock tanked. And Dude. the next day, Vince was like, no, 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 no. <laughs> this is television. This is a television angle. He doesn't own anything. Damn. And it took months for the stock to recover. Almost destroyed the company in a storyline. In a storyline. That's terrible. That's no. that's loser stuff. <laughs> it really is. By the way, somebody asked me earlier in the chat. They said, uh, is the uh, Pro-Am still going on out here? Yes, it is. Friday night at uh, Fortune High School, Al Nell Grove, going down tonight. Matter of fact, I'll be there. I'm going to go there tonight. Check out somebody. Uh, To Tyler. Yes. Someone was not happy with our conversation with Olivia yesterday. And And, and they called called customer service, which is Jesse. Well, they look, here's the thing. They got mad and said, stick to sports. When we were talking about Deshaun Watson and Jack Del Rio. Yeah. (laughs) Bro, what are you talking about? They're, they're in the NFL. Uh, It ain't our fault. They're doing things off the field. Poor Jesse. Jesse has to deal with so much. <laughs> God, he's got to deal with people who are blocked on Facebook. He's 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 got a lot on his plate, man. Jesse, you the real MVP. You deserve you deserve a three one lead tonight, buddy. You, you deserve do. a three you one do. lead. I want to see I want to see it happen. Sorry, um, Monte. We're obviously coming up on on the NBA draft. Spent time, spent spent the last hour talking about the draft, for goodness sakes. But if you kind of weed through some of that stuff, you can find some interesting, like, dra- uh, trade and free agency rumors out there. And one that I feel like may have kind of got pushed to the side a little bit, and this may be because Quinn Schneider, this may be because Donovan Mitchell, could be because Rudy Gobert. What is Phoenix going to do with DeAndre Ayton? Because I, I, I mean, we we could debate the 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 player, the fit. We could d- 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 debate the worth, the contract, all of that stuff. Yeah. But don't forget how the season, at least, appeared to have ended. Yeah. There was something with Monty Williams and and DeAndre Ayton, and uh, you know, I don't know where DeAndre Ayton fits in people's rankings in this league, but. You're talking about big men potentially being on the move. Everybody's under the assumption Rudy Gobert is going to go, but is well, what's going to happen with DeAndre Aiden? I think he gets moved. I don't like I a don't sign see, and trade. Yeah, like a sign and trade. I don't see a situation where he comes back. Could be completely wrong, but it seemed like the way that thing ended. It. I, I don't know if you go back. 
if you're DeAndre and if you're um, Vermonte Williams, I don't know if you, you want him back. I think you might want to move on. And then you talk about the price tag that's going to be DeAndre Aiden. Are you willing to pay that price tag for somebody that you're not sure fits in with what you're doing? I He could easily come back. I could see that for sure. But I think he's going to get moved. The problem is, too, though, if you're the team acquiring him, like Jesse notes, Aiton seems like the perfect fit for the Mavericks. Mm-hmm. Okay. But if it's a sign and trade, the Mavericks have to make that work somehow. Mm-hmm. And as a restricted free agent, can you force his hand? Force. Like, like meaning... It, 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 would Phoenix go with the just sign him and we'll figure it out late? We'll figure it out well, later. Model with him. Well, I'll tell you this: they would do it if Dallas was where he wanted to go. Mm. They not that's, making that's, that deal. It's a good call. Yeah. He's going. Good call. I, I think more than anything, he'd be going to the East. So, if they don't have any suitors in the Eastern Conference, I think they absolutely would just sign him. Hey, man, you're under contract. We're gonna play. Oh. You know, if something comes along, then you know we'll work it out. But as of right now, they're on the Phoenix Suns. We'll figure it out later this year, a year down the road, whatever the case may be. Because if this is an offer sheet situation, he'll get an offer sheet. Mm-hmm. Like he'll 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 get the max offer sheet, and 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 the uh, the Suns will have to match it. Um, and you think they'd have to match it? Because that's the whole deal, right? That's what we always forget. It's, it doesn't ever really happen. But just because he's a restricted free agent doesn't mean you have to match. I can think of one place where a restricted free agent contract wasn't matched. <laughs> I think of one. I'm really happy for Bogey, but the one place. And that, I mean, that could be. But in, but be but case. but Monty was. I can't figure this out later. Like mm-hmm. I, I I can't sign the seventy million dollar contract with hopes that I can move. Buddy Heald or Bogdan Bogdanovich because one of them loses significant value the second I match that contract. Right. Now, that's probably not the case with DeAndre Ayton and the Phoenix Suns unless teams just looked at it like they don't want him. They're, 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 they're doing this with the idea of moving him later but or maybe even moving him immediately. Mm-hmm. But there's no other DeAndre Ayton there, so I don't think you, I don't, I don't think you lose anything. Right, I don't, know, I don't know that you would necessarily lose value, whereas in the Bogdan Bogdanovich case, you everybody knew you were you were you were picking one, right? And you inherited Buddy. You didn't really get the opportunity uh, to keep Bogdan. You 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 could have matched the contract. You could have rolled the dice on moving them, but again, their value was gone, and we. <laughs> We learned uh, value is a high priority for Monty McNair uh, this right. past season. It's not like he was going to give up either one of them, I assume more likely Buddy than Bogey, for nothing. But I, that, yeah. might, that, that might not be the exact scenario that Phoenix is facing because there's not another DeAndre Ayton there to shop instead of him. They just, right. they, there appears to be beef, I guess. And, and, and the, the other thing about it with Phoenix that you, you got to look at as well is um, you know, this is their time. This is their time. And I'm not saying that they can't, you know, develop a, a program within that franchise where they can extend and extend their, extend their window and, um, you know, be a championship caliber team for years to come. But this is their time with Chris Paul. You know, mm-hmm. are you going to jeopardize that because you're unwilling to try to work something out with their starting center? That's a question they've got to ask themselves. I, if I was Phoenix, it would it would all be situational. If it was somebody in the Western Conference who tried to make that play to 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 sign him, I'd match and figure it out later. If it was in the, somebody in the Eastern Conference, I'd probably be a little more open to possibly just letting them walk. And I know a lot of people in here, and I've seen it as well. Some people say Detroit would would, would make a push for DeAndre Aiden. I might just let him walk. I might just let him walk. Do you talk to Chris Paul in this situation if you're James Jones and figure out kind of what he wants to do? Yeah. 
you you know how I f- normally feel about that stuff. Right. That's why. But I, but I agree. Yeah, I think. You but in have. this case, like, yeah, I think you have that. Also, this is probably it for Chris Paul in the sense this is probably his last stop, or mm-hmm. at least his last stop at this level. Yeah. Um, and you want him? He he's obviously a massive influence on where this team has been the last two seasons. I, I absolutely think you you have that discussion with him in terms right. of, of, of uh, how to handle this. You have to present him with all of the information, the financial ramifications of each, what you could do if you ultimately let him walk, the plans for filling that position. Because let's not act like he's not a – It's the dude's a starter and a good mm-hmm. one at that. Maybe mm-hmm. he's not great. He, he ain't Luka Doncic. No. <laughs> Same draft. But, yeah, but he's not yo, he's good. He's good. Uh, and it feels like for the most part, you've been happy with him. It, is, it, is it really uh, beyond repair? If anybody can fix a relationship, I feel like Monty Williams can. Monty Williams, I feel like Monty Williams could fix a, a relationship with a player. But I think that would also probably depend on DeAndre Ayton in this situation. Mm-hmm. acknowledging his part in whatever the hell happened uh, at the end of the season. Yeah. Yeah. Or, uh, I mentioned it before and I think I mentioned it before and I think people were like, no way, but you know, we got to do it. We got to ask the question. DeAndre Aiden, would you, would you take him here in Sacramento with Sabonis? <sighs> feel I feel like DeAndre Aiden has, has a little, has a little jump shot. 17 feet away. So I don't think he's stretched four in the sense of he can hit threes, but he could be at the top of the circle, maybe knock some things down. I wouldn't, but, yeah. you know, I think it's something to think about. Especially with the money involved. It's not my favorite. Like if you're going to throw, I think for him it'd be 100 plus, right? Yeah. I don't know that that's where I'd want to. I don't know. That's where I'd want to put that. But it. But that. Due diligence. Th- yeah. No. Th- 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 that's what we do here uh, as the uh, Dilo and KC general managers. <laughs> but I, that's a that's a good segue to my next question because I was looking at this headline on hoops hype about uh, Blazers expected to dangle the number seven pick to maximize uh, Damian Lillard's prime. Are the Sacramento Kings and Portland Trailblazers essentially competing for the same? thing the same stuff the same players it feels like it because I, I i haven't tapped in with below and jc in 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 portland i i don't know if phrases like win now player are, <laughs> are, are are being used but i know what our thought was i know what our thinking was when we thought the kings were drafting at seven mm-hmm. i know what we were talking about i got to imagine below and jc in portland are probably talking about the same thing which you know m- maybe the Maybe the door is open a little bit wider for them because of Dame Lillard, but I, are they breaking down John Collins, uh, <laughs> well, DeAndre be, Ayton? To, to be honest with you, I think they would be and they should be because their urgency to quote unquote win now should be more, even more than what the Kings are, with because you have Dame Lillard. You have a legit um, Hall of Fame player. One, yeah. You know, in the in the middle or maybe the beginning of the the downs, whatever you want to say. He's he's still one of the great players in this league, and you've got him right now. So drafting, you know, AJ Griffin at three and looking at him as somebody like, yeah, you know, in about two or three years, you know, he he could really do some damage for us. Well, I ain't trying to hear that. You got Dame Lillard right now. So you go get John Collins. You go get Julius Randle. You go see if you can get Pascal Siakam. Maybe you think about getting DeAndre because you need somebody that can take you to the playoffs and beyond now. So, yeah, they're they're having the same conversations as, as the Kings, but probably a little bit more. Like part of me feels like I don't even know how, if I'm Portland, I make this draft pick. Mm -hmm. because we have much more to lose than Sacramento does. Um, We haven't talked about Christian Wood in a long time. That was an old favorite of of James Ham. 
Christian Wood, I feel like, is is still out there. Here's a note from uh Well the, he's 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 out there right now. He's gonna really be out there if number three mm-hmm. is Paolo Van Par- Van mm-hmm. mm-hmm. He's really gonna be available at that point. Yeah, and maybe that's something you look at at the game. Maybe that's one way you play. Absolutely. Because that's a that's a that's an option right there. Obviously, I think you can get Christian Wood without the four. So you go get your you go get your guy in, in Ivy and you can go make a, a deal for Christian Wood and now now that's your power forward. Christian Wood is a is a wild cat though. He's he's a wild card. Remember on the floor or left, off. Well, remember when he just left at the half? Yeah. Is that unusual? Is that unusual to just leave at halftime? <laughs> like we're almost halfway through the show. I was gonna leave it too. Did you need me here though four? I, I I don't know. I thought I, I thought that was just a thing that you did. <laughs> a little bit. A little um bit. A little strange. Michael Scotto of Hoop Type, one of my favorite reporters, mostly because of his name. I was about uh, to say, what what'd you call him? Michael Scotto. Um <laughs> he wrote on Jaden Ivy. Ivy was projected. Uh, fourth overall in eight of the 11 mock drafts compiled and has long been considered the fourth best overall prospect after the big three of Smith, Holmgren, and Ben Caro. However, there is question regarding the fit of Ivy in Sacramento. The Kings also have De'Aaron Fox signed long-term and just drafted Davion Mitchell in last year's draft. According to NBA executives, this could potentially be the highest pick traded by draft night, citing Sacramento's focus to return to the playoffs as quickly as as possible. Mm. Unfortunately, uh, Michael Scotto doesn't provide those win now players uh, that we hear so much about. Cause I was really anxious to hear someone else's perspectives. Uh, he does not have one. Um, I don't think anybody has one. Like they always say this, but they don't ever have the players. I, I guess it's, I guess it's John Collins. <laughs> I guess he is the he is he is the and, de facto name Collins, that you put here. John Collins is a is a do you think that in your opinion that qualifies as a win now guy? He he's a needle mover. <sighs> oh man. I I'll yeah, be I mean, honest, man. Borderlines is a needle mover for me. He um, there's something about John Collins that makes me uneasy. Ask me what it is. It, there's availability. Okay. Because I can't pinpoint it. We didn't see him for most of the season. and But some of that I thought might be by design. Maybe so. And and it, like, again, I guess the, th- the, the theme of the day, sign now, figure it out later. Hmm. Clearly, John Collins was a, we'll sign him. We'll match. The, we'll, 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 we'll get this offer sheet. We'll figure it out later. Right. He's probably like we wondered, like, is he a part of their immediate future, much less their long term future? And even when he signed the contract, it was like, oh, hmm. OK, we'll see. And, you know, those trade rumors have never subsided. Yeah. They've stayed there. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, James will tell us like they they were really anxious to move him at the trade deadline. He was available, available. Mm-hmm. <laughs> As we take it back to one of the <laughs> one of the first bits, the the double, yeah. the double word. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he's he's there, there to be had. And it certainly feels like, like you mentioned, it was a situation where we'll sign him and we'll deal with that later. But we want to keep him as an asset and see if we can turn that into something. As opposed to just letting them go for nothing. Uh, the New Orleans Pelicans have received several calls on the number eight overall pick, and they're willing to listen to offers as well. The Pelicans are certainly an interesting team uh, to look at also to see what type of uh, steps that they take. The Donovan Mitchell rumors are out there. No, I was going to just ask you real quick. Do you think that – Do you? and this is – I'm just throwing in something out there. Mm-hmm. Don't, don't go crazy on me, everybody. Do you think that Harrison can net you either one of those picks? Seven eight, or eight or seven. Seven, almost certainly not. Eight? I don't know where no. he would play. 
Dolphins, though. No, I don't. Yeah, I don't. And Herb Jones there. I, I, I don't think so. Harrison Barnes for like you'd have to really, really love Harrison Barnes to do that mm-hmm. because it's a because because you're doing it with the idea of winning him. Oh, you're, you're you're doing it with the idea of you want him to be there longer, All right? If you're giving up a draft pick, um, yeah. Like the, I, the, the, if you're giving up a draft pick that high, if you're giving up a draft pick later in the round, and you're a, you know, you're a team that was eliminated in the, you know, the the the, the conference semis, that's that's different. You can afford like, yeah, we'll bring him in here for a year. If you if it works, great. We'll do everything we can to resign him. If it doesn't, we're certainly not going to be worse because Harrison Barnes is here and cap space is free up when, for, for, is freed up when this is all over. Hmm. I, I, I don't know what the threshold of pick number is, though. It, 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 I would, it's some like if you if you made the playoffs, if you felt like you were a veteran short, a, a three short, depth short. Th- those are the types of picks that I think could roll the dice going here. The way I would try to sell Harrison is you're adding a guy, you know, veteran guy is going to give you 15 to 17 points a game. You know, because sure. whoever you draft is that is he going to give you 15 to 17 points a night? Solid play. I, I I mean you you hope that's what Harrison does. I think it's safe to say that's what he'll give. He'll give. Anybody. Yeah, m- most most times I think he does. Mm-hmm. It's just, sometimes he doesn't. But I'm a Harrison Barnes guy, so Me too. Uh, I hope he's in the Kings uniform. We'll come back. We mentioned there's some Donovan Mitchell rumors out there already. And uh, our good friend John Hollinger. Oh yes, indeed. Uh, he took time from crapping on virtually everyone and wrote something that got my attention. It pertains to the NBA Finals. We'll talk about that next here on Sacramento's number one sports station, ESPN 1320. NBA Raid, do you guys think we are a better team if we swap Harrison for a rookie? No. I don't. I do not think so, NBA Rigged. Wow, John. Wow. <laughs> Does somebody have my house? Uh, is this regarding Collins? Um, um i don't know what the origins yeah, of the yeah, no. like i don't, I don't know what the origins of that was yeah i don't think he like it was jealousy of trey young or anything not saying you're saying that but i don't think it was that i just thought he he looked at it as you know this is trey young and john collins show and i need to be paid accordingly and atlanta was like yeah well settle down john collins I think Atlanta got like strong armed into paying him. <laughs> like they didn't. I don't think they wanted to. Which again, it's the dangers of figuring it out later. <clears throat> I'm hungry. Uh, NBA rigged. What do you think about three interesting players that Dame called out? Aiden, Collins, and Ananobi. If you were to pick one, which would be the best fit with Dame and why? Uh, I'd like to see him with with Aiden. I think Aiden might be the best player out of out of those guys. Or I feel like Aiden's probably the most reliable. And Anobi's is really good too. I like so, him. Yeah, you know, like him not, not, not anything wrong with with going with Anobi, but you get a one two punch of Aiden and and, uh, and Dame Dame Willard. That's a good look. Knicks have had discussions about signing Carmelo Anthony. Oh, yeah. Bring him home. Bring him <laughs> home. I'm 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 all for that type of stuff. Carmelo Anthony. Huh? It might, it might be. I'm gonna just keep saying it, man. Y'all keep I keep sleeping on the uh, idea of bringing Julius Randle in. He doesn't. I think they they almost had some just pay him vibes, and we'll figure it out later. 
Yeah. A couple of vibes of that. Wonder what Brad's gonna do. Feel. Mm. I think if Washington, Washington were about to, they were committed to building a better team. I think he wanted to stay in Washington, but I don't know if they're gonna gonna do that as a team. You said Brad. They want uh, Donovan though too. Tyler Hero might. Tyler Hero might get it done, though, for sure. You said Brad, and the first thing I thought was, is, remember Brad on Twitter? They used to write for... Yeah. Is he still on Twitter? Yeah. He just has a really weird handle, and he changes, He used to change it a lot, and he changes... Pro, you, you'd have to know it was him. But yeah, he's still there. That was, a, that was an interesting cat. Yeah, but he's... He's, he's, he's got his own style. He's, he's, he's got a vibe. <laughs> oh Stephen A Damien you've been to Darling Avery Avery But you remember what the so, the duo to exposes. You remember what the duo to 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 launch Bad Boy Records was called? The uh the Big Mac. The Big Mac. <laughs> yes, indeed. The notorious B.I.G. Craig Mac. Did you know two didn't really vibe? Mm. Two didn't really vibe. Big was a little bit more chill, mm-hmm. laid back. He was respectful of people. Greg Mack was a little bit more boisterous and loud. Like mm. his persona that comes across on his music, like that's really who he kind of was. And the two, no beef, right. two just didn't really, they just didn't really rock together. The Big Mac. I'm Man. on this kick where all I'm doing is listening to books about hip hop. No, Justin it's, it's Tinsley's it. book. That's, that's all I'm doing it. is I'm listening to books about hip hop. I wonder, right I wonder who, it's got to be big. I was about to say, I wonder who Puff thought would be the guy oh big it, yeah, yeah. He, he, he thought he knew it was big yeah big like when you listen to big even now and i can confirm by the way that the the, the, the life after death anniversary album did come out hmm. there's really there's a well, bunch of remixes like on apple or wherever you get your 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 music from from a streaming service the true thing is to go buy it like the, the actual physical copy of it, that's where it comes with a bunch of stuff. It's like $179. Wait, what? I'll take a heart. I love big. I'll I'll pass. I'm good. Uh, but yeah, the the uh was it is it gosh, is it 30, 25 years? 25 uh, came 25th out. Yeah. Anniversary super. I, you kind of scoffed the other day when I said Maybe we could have a conversation about life after death being better than ready to die. It's not even close. No, it's that's not. No, you're doing it again. Close. Not even close. No, no, it's not a discussion. Don't, don't do that. Life after death, first of all, is probably the greatest two disc album of all time. Yes, a that's album, true. A two disc album is virtually impossible, and he, he it's a, it's almost a flawless album as a two disc album. It, it, it's it's not. Almost a flawless act. Like it it's is. the 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 problem with life after death is, and and this is the problem with all eyes on me. This is the problem with a, any double disc. Mm-hmm. Is there's filler in there that you could get rid of? Like there's there's songs in there that like you don't have to have. The only song is play a hater. Because it, I, I love that that's the one you referenced because that's the first one that came into my head. Like yeah, that song does not need to be there. It's got to go. There, there After isn't that, nobody, nothing else really. Okay, you're nobody till somebody kills you. Maybe. Oh, n- n- oh, don't you dare! Don't do that! Don't do that! <laughs> don't do that! 
<laughs> Yo, that record's heat. Don't do that. It is. I'm just trying to. I'm just, look. No, I, the song I, you can get rid of is the one with Lil Kim. That song does yeah, not age. Probably, it, it that can go. But it's yeah, you could probably get rid of that. They have um, and you, know, so you that's need, probably, okay. You, you don't need missing you and sky's the limit. Correct. You don't need you. You don't need both of those. No. And let's not pretend Notorious Thugs is good. We all listen to the first verse and then we skip it. No, okay. Like no one wants to hear Bone Thugs and Harmony rap. You listen to the Armed and Dangerous. Ain't no many. We listen to that. Yeah. And then we skip it. I actually have a version on my iPad that's just big. <laughs> Edit it down. Cut it all the other stuff out. It's just big. We've been I, waiting uh, 25 years for this version. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's the greatest. Weird. It's the greatest double disc of all time, but it's not better. Than ready to die so with ready to die um and i like the track but uh what's what's the name of the track um the the reggae joint respect the, yeah respect I, I like respect but i've heard people say nah didn't need to be on there you need to hang out with different people I love respect. Ninety four. Now I explore new but, but, horizons. By the way, is this is this it, that's is, surprising? Is this the least surprising thing ever? Ramsey says wrong, Damien. I listen to all six minutes of Notorious Thugs. That's the <laughs> least surprising thing ever that Ramsey listens to all six minutes of Notorious Thugs. <laughs> I, 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 I am not. If I ever hear Busy Bone rap, it's on accident. Like, oh man, I got sidetracked and didn't skip this song. Let's well, see. Look, oh, Jersey's in the house, man. Pino, I want to know what our man Pino. What, what's what's the what's blasphemous? What we say about Big? Ready to Die is the greatest album ever. Life After Death is very, very good. My very, very, very good. You know, you know, I say big. But, the, but yeah. let me let me answer your question though. You asked if wh wh who Puff thought it would be big to this day sounds mm -hmm. different. Like mm -hmm. no one has been able to mimic that sound. Even when they tried to with Shine, it didn't work no. because you don't have like big. There, no matter how you feel about Eminem, Eminem ra raps in a really like unique way. It's mm -hmm. like unique to the way that he thinks. Mm -hmm. That's how Big rapped. Big rapped in a way that was unique to the way he told stories. And that's true in 1994. Mm -hmm. That's true today. Like no one today, not Cole, Drake. <laughs> this isn't meant to be a dig. Jay's the closest. Mm -hmm. Not Kendrick. No one raps and tells stories the way that he does. No, no. And you knew that back then. He was he was he's unique to the one genre. One. Yep. He's a one-on-one. -on -one. You yep. know, and I'm not I'm not just saying this because it's our guy and and we have a relationship. But I I I didn't realize it when it came out. But the other day we were talking to Olivia. Actually, it was just yesterday, and it was was trying to figure out what was Diddy's group, the girl group it was Diddy Dirty Money. So I went to, uh, I had to go to baseball practice. I threw on last train to Paris. I threw mm -hmm. on that Angels with Ross and Big on it. And mm -hmm. it was like, yo, mm -hmm. this is, ooh, Ross and Big on the track? Yeah. Ross, and, and it was, anything, it had more of a, um, it talked about, it, it spoke to me about the aura that, Ross has on a track. It is mm -hmm. on the level of big. That's that's what I came away thinking. Like, the uh, Ross is out of his weight class here, being on a mm -hmm. track with big. It was like, no, these are two giants right here on the track. Yeah, uh, yeah, literally and figuratively. Literally and figuratively. I'm a photographer's dream. Count cream is my chain swing. Makes it, it, yeah, R R Rose. Yeah, Rose's a great storyteller. 916-349-1320. I think I might be in trouble here. Uh -oh. Tony, what's happening? Uh, Cody? Cody. Cody. Oh, Cody. Sorry, what's up, Cody? 
man, you guys are talking shit about my boys. Oh, no, you can't. You can't. Hey, hey, hey. Oh. Okay, okay. All right, I will, Jesse. We got. We, sorry, we, 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 it's all right. That's all right. We're going. We're going to give you another shot. We're going to bring it back. Tell me. We're not going to keep you on here. I ain't going. I ain't going to skip. About my bone thugs, man. Really? No. Well, well, really? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, wait, wait a minute. I mean, I'm, I'm from Ohio originally, so I live. Uh, okay, I okay. Live in- Fair enough. That's, that's, that's understandable. No. That's understandable. But Kobe, hear us out. Hear us out. We're not talking about bone thugs. We're not. We love bone thugs. You, said, you, said, I got- you can't just skip. You can't. You don't. You listen to the whole song, Notorious. No, 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 after, no. After no. Big the song is over. The song's over. Yeah, it's over. Well, after you, song, you, you, thug, you want thug love too? You do the same. You do the same. You just listen to Pac. Oh verse man, Pac's verse on Thug Love is nasty. But the cold part about <laughs> the cold part about that is, it's not at the beginning. Yeah. So see, you kind of have to. Yeah. <laughs> you kind of. I mean, bro, you gotta have to listen to it. And 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 and, they, and, hey, and they also they also have a song with Big Pun. Yeah, no, well, they, they legends, yo dude, for the for the love of money with easy like the the, the the records are there, Cody. There's no doubt. It's this just what I say, Cody. It this is more about Big than it is Bone. What Big did on Notorious Thug, it's just mm. stop the record after that. Mm. What do you mean? Okay. Well, look, sure. I'm not, look, I'm not, just to say face have... with our man Cody. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is about Big. It's not about Bone. <laughs> <laughs> it's not about Bone. Look, I'm not. I, I'm I'm not I'm not deep into the Bone Thugs uh, a library. That's not my bag. That's just not my bag. You know, first of the month. You know, I know them or whatever. I don't know all the words. It's nothing like that. But I respect what they've done in this game. I respect their fan base. It's not my bag. But that's Easy's crew. And come to think about it, the best verse on "For the Love of Money" is Easy's. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. standing on the corner straight yeah. like that but they they they've got a catalog i'm i'm sorry cody that's it's i mean not my favorite they did a versus my recently bad. yeah my bad. i'm gonna act like i tuned in i was, I was in and out who was that three six mafia who was it i think so yeah, yeah it was three six and they started they yeah, fought they, started fighting. they got into a fight <laughs> great this, now, is, this, now see, this look, is what we need all over so, apple so cody, music i do know yeah, I think there's also that. <laughs> when you can't really dissect what's going on, you just kind of. <laughs> and the line was always big out, out, out did bone. Yeah, like big. he took bone style and did it better than they did. Yeah, and I, I always was sensitive to that. That's unfair to bone. It was just big, just big is just, He's the, just the best. You monster. know my favorite line in that is it's it's probably everybody's favorite line. Look at all the bulls I've been through, so-called beef with you know who Ooh. didn't he? <laughs> like yeah, wait everybody waited for so big what you know everybody waited for big to diss Pac. Ooh. And the closest he came was so-called beef with you know who. Big unless big. you read between the lines on Long Kiss Tonight, then mm. he crapped all over him. <laughs> and then and then you listen. I think Jada was talking about it, you, you know, in the story. He's like, yo, before the song hit, he just went crazy. It was C's. It was yeah. C's. That's right. He it was just little C's, crazy yeah. on the disc. But yeah. he said, nah, we're not putting that on the on the album. But they said Puff crazy. destroyed it. <laughs> they said Puff was like, no one's ever gonna hear this. Uh what's up, Manny? What's up, guys? How y'all feeling? Manny, what's up, man? I ain't heard from you in a minute. Everything good with you, big dog? Just been trying to get this prom- promotion, so I've been working some extra hours. I feel okay, you, boss, man. You, big dog. I feel you. For me, like, Ready to Die is such a perfect album, right? Like, my two favorite albums overall, like, is Ready to Die and the DOC. No one can do oh, it. Oh, man. Yeah. Um, like, I think that DOC album was so far advanced of its time in so many ways and i can play and i think that's probably one of the greatest group the last the, the grand finale is like one of the greatest group songs i've heard ever and just just from beginning to end is flawless but mm. the, the whole the whole biggie uh out like I, I agree with you there like i think everyone was so shocked that not and his versatility at that point that that's why they think they outbone i don't think he really outboned bone but he definitely kept up with them, and everybody was like, 
damn, like, that's, that's crazy. Nobody saw that coming. And I think that's why I get such high praise on that. Appreciate you, Manny. You just had a Kenny moment, but that's fine. <laughs> just had a Kenny moment, but that's fine. I know the whole chat, the whole, whole chat just hit the pause button. It's all right. It's all right, Manny. You got to be careful. <laughs> Sophomore class field trip here. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate it. I believe the line was he outboned bone. I believe that's what he said. Oh man. You're listening to D-Lo and Casey. No, you're never safe on this show, you man. Just, you can't even talk on this show. You just not. can't. <laughs> you're listening to D-Lo and Casey on ESPN 1320 KIFM West Sacramento KRXQ HD2 Sacramento and Odyssey Station and driven by Lasher's Elk Grove Dodge. That's like I think that's 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 hip hop. That's musicians. You've got to be versatile. And back then, especially, you know, and I don't, I don't even know what the climate is like today, but back in 94, like you had to have a club record. You had to have a street record. You mm-hmm. had to have a radio mm-hmm. record. That's what Juicy was. I think that's why Juicy is my favorite song. I've said since the you know jump, I've always been an R&B guy first. Yeah. So when you combine a classic R&B record like that with. With Big, it's yeah. it's a, it's a flawless song. I mean, B- Big Papa was a hit for Big a Papa reason. I thought Big Papa was the one. That was oh, it's one. A, it's amazing. Like yeah, look at what they look look at how they flipped one more chance. Like one more chance oh, is a you mean nobody listening to the hey, ain't nobody listening to the CD version of one more chance, but you're listening to the, the but you're listening to the El Barge version Ooh, of one more chance. Boy, Puffy Puffy and, and Big probably the the best duo in the history of music in hip hop music. Yeah, that era. Those two were that era of music making. They were was called phenomenal. Jack in the early and, 2000s. And, 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 and think about that. That was 1994. That means that happened the year after the Chronic and Doggy Style mm. dropped. Mm. I think we talked about this before. And we'll get to sports at some point. Who knows? It's Friday. Yeah. But uh, John Holland. The big, big hit. <laughs> Knife After Death, Ready to Die. The best two album sequence mm-hmm. of of any artist now unfortunately there's only two but yeah i you talk about i mean kendrick's up there like when you look at good kid to pimp a butterfly people who like these type of albums will put tribe up there i don't even know what albums but i always hear tribe not really my bag i think tribe got um i think they got the one the uh i always throw outcast in there too okay which one was second uh Uh, women i are Oh, AT Aliens was second. Yeah. AT-Aliens. You know how much I love that first album. Yeah. Go with that. Those guys, man. And yeah. I'm not even like those aren't even that's not even one of my favorite two. It's it's Aquemini and AT Aliens are my favorite two, but Southern Playlistic. Whew. Whew. Those boys are sick, man. Yeah. Those boys are sick. I'm trying to think. I mean, oh, it's man. not hit. I, I'm, I'm trying to think of a better two album combo like i mean thriller and bad mm. I'm, I'm just trying to think of uh, just even Any something two. outside of Any hip-hop bad. yeah like yeah. The, 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 the the hip-hop like cube comes to mind but like uh, well, uh, uh america's most wanted in death certificate it, it doesn't measure the same way ready to die and life after death was though i'd argue they're both classic albums and, and um, you know what damien damn it damn it there's a guy who, who absolutely did it and we can't just can't even talk about it. Matter of fact, I talk about one of the, the greatest two disc albums of all time. I mean, th- that guy's got nothing more. on what would what would the two albums be though? I would twelve t- play has okay, to be you know, one. We're just doing this for journalistic uh, purposes, right here. We're, we're mentioning we're broadcast him journalists. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's twelve play, and then the self titled R. Kelly. The self titled R. Kelly mm. was crazy. Mm. No, nah, it was crazy. The self title album was nuts. 12 Play was a monster, though. It was. That was a like, was. So that's what I'm saying. That was you a put game changing together. album. And then and then he came with the double disc, the R. Oh my gosh. Oh my goodness. And that's before we get into his probably his best album, which was TB2. <laughs> oh my God. I, 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 12 Play and TP2 were his best two albums. I mean, 12 Play was. There ain't a record that you. No, 
Boy, TV two was a, I, was a if it was allowed. <laughs> Like twelve play could go like on on a Friday night with with you and the loved one, oh, you know. Yeah. Would you, that that could that that still it all still works, except for summer bunnies like that. You just skip past <laughs> summer bunnies, but the rest of it, the rest of it works. The rest of it still works. Oh man, yeah man. I don't know. TP two might be the best though. He did. Damn. Too bad. All right, in the box. box. He's I in the box right next to Deshaun Watson. <laughs> next to Deshaun Watson highlights and old episodes of the Cosby <laughs> show. Right there in the box and put away. Yeah. It's a sad thing, too. Like you can try to cheat and like put on an R. Kelly song at the house, but you mess around like you can't you can't put it in the car. No, nah, because what if you pull up to somebody? That's you, might be able to put up, you might uh, be able to put it on now because the air going to be on. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, the air, air going to be cranking. Oh, man. This is, this is good stuff. Yeah. I'm actually just relieved to not be talking about the draft for a minute. I think it, it's almost like cool. it's, you know, it's really hot outside and you're just standing in front of a, like the air conditioner. That's what this moment feels like right now where we're not trying to talk about Paolo Bancaro or Jaden Ivey or, or Chet Holmgren or, <laughs> Or whoever, just 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 stay in there. Uh, uh Shot of Man says not a love for Pac, not enough love for Pac up in here. That's okay. Like all eyes on me, and and I and I have I've, I've listened to all eyes on me recently. It's one of those double discs that it's like bad, bad. But some of the stuff I hate about that era is it's so formulaic. Mm-hmm. Like Pac. Pac is what that what I love, especially at like Pac died when I was 16. So what mm. I love about 15, 16 years old, Pac was angry. Mm. Like thug love. Angry. Yeah. That's what I love. But it, like when Danny Boy comes in on the hook, it's like, <laughs> all right. Like even the stuff they released after he died sounded oh, like that. It would be like this nasty. Have you ever heard the you've heard the Madison Square Garden freestyle with Big and Pac? I got seven Mac 11s, oh, about yeah, yeah. eights. Yeah. Pox first. I know it's Madison Square Garden. It's a, it's, it's a, it's a show at, at, at Madison Square Garden and big freestyles a verse and then Pac immediately freestyles another verse. Mm-hmm. Pox verse is so nasty because he's so angry mm-hmm. and it's like venomous. And it's like, that's the Pac I like listening to. I don't want to hear Jodeci do the hook after I hear Pac tear something up. I don't know that, but that, 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 that not that it's bad because there's some yeah, heat that's there. Pac right there, that's what he does. That's but just some of it didn't. Right. Some of it the just versatility. Didn't to, you know, I'm going over all eyes on me right now, and it's it's not as good as Life After Death. Not even close. But it's it's phenomenal though. It is phenomenal. Like the first the first disc went crazy. It went crazy in my mind. The second disc faded a little bit like after the first half of the second disc it was like yeah but you know they got all eyes on me towards the end of that one run the streets was on there um rather be you was mm-hmm. on there check out mm-hmm. i mean mm-hmm. all eyes on me went crazy both discs went crazy i mean they glow because it's the home of california love how do you want it mm-hmm. and two of america's most wanted Picture and I ain't mad at you. Yeah. yeah, I mean, but that you you uh, you ain't even reference you ain't even reference my two favorite songs. Is it okay? I don't I don't think this is it, but I'm gonna say, it. is it the one with uh, is it the one with um, it's not with Jodeci. It's with Devonte. Yeah, no Devante. more pain. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it starts with that piano. Devonte, <laughs> oh don't you know we going <laughs> up in the same place at the same time? That's Ooh. And then second is ambitions one. as a writer, yeah, man. which they have sim- when, when, you, when you listen to the two, they have similar sounds. Uh, but no more pain starts with that piano. Oh, no more pain, oh, it's fire. Oh, man. And look, you sleeping. I think you sleeping on. Uh, got my mind made up. It's okay. <laughs> what? It's okay. It's what? okay. Yeah, it's all okay. Right. It's all right. It's all right. That's all right. It's all right. Like it's okay. <laughs> that song is sick. That was uh, look. 
Okay, this is going to sound blasphemous, but but hear me out. By the way, James Ham coming up an hour from yeah, now. He'll break we're, down we're, all we're getting, on me we're, even <laughs> further. Yeah, he's actually going to dive into the origins of Machiavelli, the Don Cominati <laughs> Seven Day Theory. <laughs> and, and and shy Pino uh, name all my people. Hear me on this one when I say this. Got my mind made up was Pac's version of Notorious Thugs. He took it to the East Coast with that. And okay. he got on there and he did his well, thing. He did yeah. his thing. He's from the East Coast. But he's a what he's looked at as a West Coast rapper. He he if you if you want to say I don't that, he think he had a style that was I don't think Pac had a style like rapping that lived on a coast. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Like right. the producing, I feel like would influence like, okay, this is a West Coast record. Right. Like you, you, me against the world doesn't sound like all eyes on me at all. Nah. Well, you get he had that's when he had uh, well, easy mode now that I say it out that. loud, that's a pretty cold back to back set of records because me against the world is a that that's is a, a that's a bad album right there. Yeah, all right, mm. we got it all out of our system. Well, we'll do it again next Friday, <laughs> actually. We can, <laughs> shoot. <laughs> Kyle Matson loves hip hop. I mean, Kyle, <laughs> Kyle, Kyle joins us next. James Ham joins us. We were really just killing time because Trista couldn't be with us today. Um, I, I do want to mention what John Hollinger said, though. Don't let me forget that. Oh, I want to mention what he that. said uh, about the Boston Celtics and how what they might do uh, is really, really unique. So we'll dive into that. Kyle Matson will join us when we return here on d and Casey, brought to you by McQueen and the Violet Fog, the smoothest chin in the world, handcrafted in Brazil here on Sacramento's number one sports station, ESPN 1320. Doing a show? Yeah, I got a show. Uh, let's get this up here real quick. 13th round. 13th round with your main man, Kenny Caraway. Shout out to my people over at Meister Watches, Ryan and the whole crew doing what they do as always. And yeah, Jaime Magia is fighting this weekend. Nobody really cares because he, he he's not, he, he's never stepped up. It, it, it never stepped up. Not once. And he, he's not even moving units like that. I like Jaime Magia, but I need him to do more before he gets some kind of preview with me. What I got a question about though, because somebody brought something to my attention. And it was some call in YouTube show. And I don't mean to disrespect or anything. I'm not talking bad about it. I just don't know the name. I'm not familiar with it. Um, and they had a guy calling in talking about how Gervonta Tank Davis is nothing but a hype job. And then he comes back and he says, well, Lomachenko is greatness. And it just reminds me. And th- these are the reasons why I have the 13th round. And I want to speak on some of these things because I need some answers. And I continue to answer the question, ask the question time and time again. Why do people want Tank Davis to not be good so damn bad? Like they will, they will go out of their way. They will break their neck to prove why he's not good. Why? 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 Nobody here is saying he's the greatest. Nobody's saying he's number one pound for pound in the game. Nobody here that 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 likes him and, and supports him and thinks he's good is even saying like, yo, he's he's facing the best and, and his resume doesn't need to be disputed. We're not even saying that. We want to see him in the ring against Devin Haney. We want to see him in the ring against Ryan Garcia and all those other guys. Nobody's saying that, but to just disregard what your eyes see and what he's able to do in the ring and say he's not talented, he's not really that good, why do people want Gervonta to be bad, so bad? Why? I don't understand that. He's great for the sport. He's helped boost in the profile of the sport of boxing, and he's in a position to bring the big fights to boxing. I don't understand where it comes from. Maybe some of y'all can let me know. I don't know. That's the 13th round. I don't know why. Well, yeah, there's that too. There, there's that too, Jesse. Mhm. 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 Yeah. No, you're you're right. You're right. And I think a lot of the times, 
it gets and and and, and I'll say this because because you my guy, a lot of the Mexican fight fans don't like Tank because they think that takes away from whether it's T.O. Ryan or whatever the case may be. And regardless of whether T.O. may be one exception, because I don't think T.O. is that good, but Lomachenko, all these guys, whether I like them or whatever the case may be, I don't take away from the fact that they're great fighters. Like, these guys are top of the class. You know what I mean? I, whether I like them or not or the the, the affiliation with the the networks, that's something else. But they're they're great fighters. I don't know why it just it can't be that for Tank. Yeah, I don't know why it can't be that for Tank. Like he's good, but you know I want to see him fight somebody else or something. They just always like, ah, oh, he's just a hype job. He's not that good. All right, whatever. Yeah. <clears throat> I got people playing video games on the screen right now, playing two K. Okay. On the playground. <laughs> oh man oh man <clears throat> i hate this stuff <laughs> nba old oh boy i'm all for the jokes but you need to learn this brand it's called actively black come on man come on now look it up look it up look it up and support it i got it Kyle Matson said to join us coming up here in just a couple of minutes. James Ham going to join us at the top of the three o'clock hour. Game four of the NBA Finals between the Golden State Warriors and the Boston Celtics can be heard here tonight. Uh, John Hollinger often gets my attention on social media for the wrong reasons, uh, <laughs> but he wrote a column for the Athletic that. I feel like he's sort of crapping on Jason Tatum, though I don't think he's trying to. Um, he's talking about uh, Jason Tatum, you, you, you know, the Boston Celtics potentially being on the, or, or not potentially being on, they, they're on the verge of winning an NBA championship. They got a couple of games to win. And he points out that it, it, with this run of the NBA finals that they're having could wind up being really, really unique for Boston because when you look at championships past, almost all of the, the the teams that win the finals have a a top three at worst, top five player. Mm -hmm. And his his, his point, uh, you know, early in the article is Tatum still hasn't quite taken that step yet. Mm -hmm. Even in this series, you kind of keep waiting for Tatum. Like we, you 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 said following uh, game three, we haven't J Jason Tatum hasn't had that game yet. All right. And it, it, that's kind of the, the the same thing that he's saying. But when you look back on it, and you realize, you know, it's 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 Steph, it's KD, it's LeBron. Uh, last year it was Giannis Antetokounmpo, it's Kawhi Leonard. Even though I'm a, I, I I love Tatum, and I have zero doubt that he's going to take that step. I think Hollinger actually has a point here. He mm. hasn't taken that step yet. This could be a a really unique team that winds up if they win winds up winning the the nba championship well i i i see where he's coming from and he's he's right to an extent generally you get that right you get your champion being uh, ha having a top five player in the league on the squad but as i think back to this you get it's probably more than than people give it credit for where that's not the case. I don't know if it, it's definitely not the majority. I'll say that it's not the majority. But that you have look, a top three player. Yeah, I mean, that, or top. Go back to twenty eleven. Dirk wasn't top. So five okay, okay. So so he he actually points that out. He points out Dirk and Dwayne Wade, yeah, so and says that they they were just on like a a tear. Mm -hmm. in the postseason to where they couldn't be stopped. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. Tatum isn't. Tatum's not on that tear right now. No, no, he's not. He's not not on what they were doing. Those guys were doing something crazy at that time. 
So there's that. I think the only other outlier would be the Spurs, the 2014 Spurs, that won after losing. They played the Heat again. And yeah. Okay. All right. Um, but for the most part, yeah, you're right. Like, or he's right too. It's unique. Yeah, it, you don't, it, you don't it, get it, that it, all the time. Though I think I think Tatum is 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 going to take that step, uh, and we bring in uh, Kyle Matson, who's top five all the time, and he's got the sleeves rolled up uh, and the tattoos out right now. Uh, I didn't get the memo on sleeveless Friday. That's on me. That's my fault. So I improvised on the fly. That's all right. Say is 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 hot where you're at. It's like that. You, you no know, sleeves, no sleeves needed out there. It is hot. Uh, I think we're at one o two right now. Oh my! Oh wow. I was about to make a Bay Area joke, like, what's hot, 89 degrees? I mean, yeah. <laughs> no, in Oakland, it's like 90, and a lot of people in Oakland don't have ACs. Yeah. And so that's the problem with San Francisco. Like, it's I think it's 83 or 85 in the city right now, and your home is probably not equipped for, hmm. for anything above, like, 60. So Didn't, like, and maybe it was two years ago or a year or three, but they had a – crazy hot summer like there was like was a couple years couple ago. Of, uh, high 90s hundreds in san francisco yeah. and people were losing their mind I understand yeah. so like i said the city's not ready for it so your sleeveless look is cool though because you got all the ink and i don't i don't i don't have that i'm just blank canvas i know a guy bro i'm sure i'm sure you <laughs> there's, there's nothing i, I, I want to do over there I'll put the ready to die baby. Right now. <laughs> that would be sick. <laughs> um, <laughs> do a vibe check. Kyle Matson, curator of vibes over at 95, seven, the game in San Francisco and does a variety of 49er stuff that we don't point out as much as we should, though, though he's still working very hard at NinersWire.com and candlestick chronicles, but vibe check headed into game four tonight. How you feel? <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> I think I was talking about this. On on Candlestick Chronicles with with Chris Biederman, the my my co my co host there, and we we're talking about it. We we're talking about football and how so often in football, it just comes down to like who has more dudes, mm. like and you know what I mean. Like that guy's a dude. Mm -hmm. Like he's like Jason Tatum's a dude. Jalen Brown's a dude. And I think at this point, like the Celtics just have more dudes. Mm. I mean that's that's with 34 year old Steph Curry and Clay Thompson being where he is physically in his early thirties, Draymond green, we've known his game is not going to age super well. And he's in his early thirties. And then, you know, Jordan Poole's not there yet. I like Jordan Poole a lot, but he, he is, he is supposed to be their dude. And when you guys were just talking about that, that Spurs team in 2014 that came back and won it the year after they lost to Miami, um, Kawhi was turning into a dude. And he kind of helped get Parker Ginobili and and Duncan over the hump. So Jordan Poole is just not ready to do that. Um, and I just don't think the Warriors can defend all the guys that that can put the ball in the hoop for the Celtics. And then um, if Steph Curry's not, um, you know, Super scoring cool. fifty right now, yeah, uh, he's playing really well. But they need, you know, they got 25 from Clay the other night, 31 from Steph. That's that's a W. Mm -hmm. But I think uh, Andrew Wiggins at 18 and then like Jordan Poole with 10. Like that was their net. That's how the scoring progression went. They just don't have enough dudes to to beat Boston three times out of the next four. Did you feel that way before the series started or did no. the, the three games influence that? No, the three games influence that because if you it, 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 the like there are some Warriors fans that think that game two was like this Warriors domination. And like, no, they pulled away in the third quarter and then just didn't let the Celtics back into the game. This Boston was in that game. Uh, Draymond said that, that Golden State dominated 42 minutes of game one. That's not, <laughs> that's not what happened at all. At least that's not the game I watched. Uh, I think the Celtics had the lead at halftime in that one. And the Warriors had their big third quarter run, but they couldn't stretch it out. And then, yeah, Boston hit a bunch of shots, but Boston also dominated that game. Like the, what the Warriors did offensively in that fourth quarter was just not, it it, it, did, it wasn't going to take a, a historic night from Boston to to pull away in the fourth with how Golden State's offense was playing. And then, you know, they score 11 points in the fourth quarter the other night after briefly taking the lead in the third. I just, Boston's really, really good. And this isn't the prime warriors anymore they're going to need boston to make some mistakes and if boston's going to play their a game they're just they're just better yeah I, I, based on 
uh, the comments made after game one by Draymond and then his performance in game three. I'm not actually sure he's at these NBA finals right now. I, I think his, his his body might be there, physically there, but he may be uh, in a time machine somewhere like in 2017 because I don't know what he's talking about or what he's doing half the time. It's So he was... So here's the thing with Draymond is when he's going to be the tone setter, quote unquote, because he is in game two. I felt really good about game two when he tied up Al Horford on the first possession. Wow. It was like he is locked in. He is engaged. And that's that's how he's going to play. The Warriors are going to follow suit. But when he comes in and he's checked out of a game from the jump. Like that, this the opposite is going to happen for the Warriors. Like they need him to be locked in and to be really, really good. And when he's, you're not going to get him to score. So if he's also getting punked on the glass and he's not doing anything offensively, anything you know, earth shattering in terms of distribution, and then he's going to foul out. Like, <laughs> cool man. Like he was, he was close. He was lazy closing out. He he was how many Boston? I, I don't know how many points in the paint they had, but the Warriors never give up just easy buckets like that. Mm-hmm. And Boston they was getting to the rim when it got to you, what six missed a lot of points at the rim too. <laughs> they did. They smoked a lot of layups. Um, it just, I mean, at the end of the day, like if Draymond isn't going to be a hundred percent of whatever he is now, like I just don't know how the Warriors even have a, have a chance. But, but that's the thing too. It's like, what is he? They had 52 right. points in the paint, by the way. Jesus. <laughs> it was 52 to 26. You know I was saying you need you need dudes. He's just not a dude anymore. Like he's he's just he's fine. Like he's, yeah, and that's the and that's the thing. Like you were talking about his engagement and his intensity level. And there was there's no question it was there in 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 game two. But we I think so much was made of that storyline, it was ignored that that didn't have an impact on the game. Like the, the the stuff of him run, you know, he was he was running Grant Williams over. He was or Rob Williams or whichever Williams he was running over. He was got his foot on Jalen Brown's face. That was in the first half, and that it was fifty two to fifty at halftime. Mm-hmm. It wasn't until the third quarter, you know, at the, 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 the end of the third quarter, where things started to slip away for Boston with a combination of turning the ball over, uh, missing shots, and then the Warriors, you know, doing their part on the offensive end and kind of putting the death blow in. But all of that stuff about Draymond and setting the t- it didn't have an impact on the game. Um, I, I would say it did because it allowed the Warriors like they didn't play well in that first quarter, but they still had the lead after the first quarter. They they had the lead at halftime. Whereas the other night, they just got boat raced out of the gate. And I know they took a lead in the third quarter. They had that little run. But when you climb that mountain to get you, you battle all the way back mm-hmm. to get it. To, to take the lead by one, it's like you you hit your NOS button. Like mm-hmm. you're out of gas now. Right. And then they pull Steph and they it just um it just kind of snowballed again on them. And I think that where Draymond's important come importance comes in, Damien, to, to answer your question, I think it comes from setting a tone where they're not they they can't play uphill against Boston. Mm-hmm. Like they can't play from behind because it it takes so much effort to a get a stop and then b go down and score mm-hmm. that I just don't think it's realistic that if they get down 15 that they can a battle back and then b extend that lead to to win. Mm-hmm. I'm just based on what I've I've seen. Like I said, this isn't an overreaction to Game Three. It's just like if you just take the totality of the three games, they haven't even gotten a good Jason Tatum game yet. I mean, he's been he's been good, but they haven't gotten that like forty point Jason Tatum game yet. It feels like one of those is coming. Um, there will be another game where their role players shoot the lights out. Like it's just, I I don't, you know, one of the talking points on our station this week on ninety five seven was like, what's the adjustment? It's like, I don't know, man. Jonathan Kaminga, nineteen year old Jonathan Kaminga is your adjustment. Like, good night. Like that's that can't be your move in the finals. Well. The move, and I was I was listening to the stage, and I was listening to Bonte and Butcher, and and they touched on something that we all know is not going to happen, but the move seems to be less Draymond Green and preferably out of the starting lineup. It's always move this guy, move Looney, da da da. No chance. And no chance. It happens, and, no and I don't even think that it should happen. Like somebody like Draymond, 
you go down with the with with the ship. That's the guy that yep. you that you rode with for the last five six years. You ride that all the way to, to the end. But I mean. From what I've seen, and then I think Bonte, I wish I would have took down the numbers, but he had the numbers to kind of back it up. All their runs, and when they play really well, they're usually with Draymond off the court mm -hmm. in this particular series. And I don't know, like, I know he would not start, but do you, do you, when you talk about getting Kaminga in there and getting some of those guys in there, do you mess with his minutes at all? Like, maybe five minutes of Kaminga comes at the expense of five minutes that Draymond might be on the floor. Man, that's tough. Um, because there's a real risk that if you don't have Draymond directing things like Kaminga just lost mm -hmm. that that's a, that's a big time possibility mm -hmm. where you would need Draymond a, to be able to play a little bit of center field to maybe cover for Kaminga. If he misses an assignment and B just kind of, you know, barking orders and, and making sure he knows where to be. Uh, Otto Porter can do that a little bit. I think uh, Steph's a really good communicator on defense. Uh, Andre Godala, obviously, but I think they want to Jonathan Kaminga is <clears throat> like, he's more athletic than Draymond at this point, but he's, he has, he just doesn't have enough experience defensively or offensively. All like right. not only is he a player that the Celtics are going to be like, yeah, you can shoot it, but he's not going to distribute. You don't know if he's going to make the right pass. Right. Um, it's a, it's a big risk putting him in the game for sure. But I mean, they may be forced to like, they may just need size and athleticism, but I, I do think that he has to be there with Draymond, um, on the court because it could be, it could be a real disaster if he's not. Mm. I want to stop short of throwing dirt on top of the golden state warriors, you know, down two one, even though I feel like like you do, Kyle, I feel like the Celtics are not only a better basketball team, I think they might be a significantly better basketball team. Hmm. But the one thing that pauses me on on all of this and proclaiming the Celtics, the the, the champions in this series over and all of that, is the best, cur the, the, the best player on the floor is still a Golden State Warrior. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As long as Steph Curry is the best player on the floor, I feel like the Golden State Warriors have a chance to win any game they're in because of, you know, we saw Clay heat up a little bit we, we, we saw clay have some some stretches mm -hmm. where where the shot was falling for him and it doesn't really feel like that didn't really feel like anything other than clay getting hot which is which is great for the words feels like when steph gets hot like all of a sudden andrew wiggins can do more it's like they're it's like superpowers that are breathed into all of these other players and steph getting going it's it's like the ultimate nas boost to stick with the fast and the furious references for 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 the rest of the Golden State Warrior scores. Well, you had your Dom Toretto outfit on, so I figured I'd, <laughs> I'd stick with that. Um, <laughs> no, it, it's um, yeah, I I I think that Guru, my uh, one of the hosts at ninety five seven, tweeted that that Boston's not afraid of anything. It's like no, they're afraid of Steph. Like they are deathly afraid of Steph Curry, and when he gets rolling. You see, like there's been those screenshots of of when he drives and it's four Celtics around him in the paint. Yeah. Like that's what scares Boston. I think that to your point, when Steph gets rolling, Boston's game plan is do everything to shut that faucet off. Because if it means Andrew Wiggins is going to score 25 and Clay Thompson's going to get hot for a little bit, fine. But Steph Curry's not going to score 40 and shatter our defense. Right. I I just I don't I don't think that that's that's what Boston wants. And I think that yeah. So, 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 Kyle, if you could choose, and you may need one, but let's just go with one and say one is all you need that changes everything around. If you could choose one of those others to step up and show up, and I, I'm not including Clay because I think Clay's going to play well again tonight. But if it, mm -hmm. you could choose Andrew Wiggins, Jordan Poole, um, Draymond, Otto Porter, which, which one, in your opinion, would impact? this Warriors team winning the most that they were to show up. If, if you get like peak performance from each of those guys, I think it's Draymond mm -hmm. because then he's orchestrating your defense at a high level and he's a borderline triple double threat. If he's, if he's locked in and playing well, um, the Celtics are giving him any wide open three he wants. If he hits one or two of those, uh, that that's a, that's a pretty big deal. So I think if, if you're getting like a player's best game, uh, I think it's Draymond because of the way he affects both ends of the court. But I think you could say the same thing for Andrew Wiggins. 
Hmm. Um, and then Jordan Poole is interesting because he hasn't had a 20 point game since game two against Dallas. Hey. And over the first eight playoff games, I tweeted this yesterday over the first eight playoff games, the biggest, the biggest stat, like his points are down, his assists are down, his rebounds are down, his shooting percentages are all down. But the thing that, that sticks out the most to me is he's taking five fewer shots per game over the last 11 than he did over their first eight. He just seems tentative. Um, there were, there were two or three opportunities early in game three where he could have, I thought taken the ball to the rack or taken a three that he didn't. And that like audacity to just shoot in those moments, like lights don't matter. Size of the moment doesn't matter. He's going to, he's going to take that shot. That's what impressed me the most about him. And I think that's kind of his best asset. And it just hasn't been there. The Warriors don't necessarily need him to score 30, but they need him to be a, a little bit of a threat. And that just hasn't that just hasn't really been the case. But uh, it'd be great if Jordan Poole would get going. But they need if you're getting an A plus game from somebody, it Draymond's the guy that they that they need. Is it the moment for Jordan Poole? Is it the offense? Like what what's 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 keeping him from? <laughs> I think it's Robert Williams a little bit. Okay. Um, Fair enough. Yeah, because he was getting whatever he wanted in the paint against against um, against Dallas. Mm -hmm. uh, he was getting whatever he wanted in the paint against Dallas for the most part, getting whatever he wanted in the paint against Denver. And then when John Morant went out, we saw the Grizzlies kind of shut the faucet off on him as well. They ramped up that physicality and he just mm -hmm. kind of struggled over the last three games of that series. But um, I, I think, I think it's a little bit the moment, um, but it's also a big physical defense with, with Boston. He's not able to get to the rim and, and rack up points that way. Um, and I think too, he doesn't want to be the guy that shoots him out of a game. Hmm. Um, you know, it's, it's Steph, it's clay. He's, he's 22. So Jordan Poole's 22. So he's 20. He was like 15 when the Warriors won their first title. Like he grew up watching these dudes win championships and now he's playing with them trying to win a championship. I could see where it's like, I'm going to pull this three. Oh, never mind. There's Steph. Let me get him the ball and let him do his thing. Yeah. Um, he just needs to shoot it. Like if, if they, if they go down because Jordan Poole was shooting it 15 times, I, fine. Uh, I would rather that than, you know, Draymond hoisting threes from the corner and um, Andre Godala taking 24 footers. I'm going to, I'm going to tip my hat to Peyton Pritchard too. I think Peyton Pritchard has won that matchup and he has, he, before we even get to Rob Williams, like he, Jordan Poole can't get by Peyton Pritchard right now. Like he's, he's done a really good job guarding him. And keeping him from feeling comfortable out there on, on the floor, man. So, uh, tip of the hat to him, Kyle. With all this that we've talked about, it sounds like a, a, a wake for the Warriors and all this other stuff. I said, I think Monday or whenever it was when, yeah, Monday when they went one one. I think you said it last week. Yeah, that we've been on this one for a while. Hey, man. If the I said if the Celtics win their two games in Boston they'll be the NBA champions. If the Golden State Warriors get a split in Boston, I think they'll win the NBA Finals. And regardless of what Game 3 looked like or what happened, you still have that opportunity if you're the Golden State Warriors to come in and get that split, get the home mm -hmm. court advantage back out there. I, It's not over for these guys yet. It, it, no. It's absolutely not over for these guys yet. They're going to have to... The thing that concerns me, though, and, and me and Damian mentioned it, is they need... They need mistakes. It feels like they need mistakes from Boston yep. to win the game. Yeah, if they both play their A game, Boston's going to win. Yeah. yeah. Like, that's, I, I think that's a, no, that's a really good point. And that's why, like, you guys are right. The series is not over. And if you told me, yeah, hey, the Warriors won in seven, I, I'd be like, oh, okay, sure. Like, that, that's a thing that could happen. Mm -hmm. But based on what's happened, like I said, the totality of the first three games, and especially what we saw defensively from Golden State the other night where Boston, uh, Damien, you said it, 52 paint points. They had 60 po 68 points at the half. They wind up with 116, pulled away in the fourth quarter again. It just, there, there's there's a lot of things that was like, one game, okay, two games, okay, three games, okay, now it's a pattern. Mm -hmm. And I, I just, uh, down the stretch in winning time, Boston twice now has, has pulled games out. And I'm just, I'm not, I just don't know what the answer is for the Warriors outside of like, oh, Boston turns the ball over a bunch one game. They have another game where they don't hit their shots. And then they have another game where 
Jason Tatum's shoulders bothering him and he's just not he's just not right. I, I mean, that's the kind of stuff that needs to happen, I think, if the Warriors are going to win. Well, I think the series is far from over. There's, there's. Kenny said something earlier in the week, and I just can't get it out of my head because I had said following game three that it feels like Boston is significantly better than Golden State. And mm -hmm. Kenny said Steph Curry has entered, and I thought this was just a, such a great line. Steph Curry has entered that rarefied air that LeBron James sat in for so long where you're getting to the NBA Finals you're the best player on the floor, but there's nothing you could do about it. Like there's nothing like you, you, you're doing everything you can to influence the outcome of a yeah. game. It's not enough. You're the best player, but the other team is better. Yeah. Yeah. I think there's a little bit of that. And then it's, it's exacerbated even with Steph because LeBron like <laughs> game one of the 2018 finals was like the singular, most dominant, single player performance I've ever watched. Mm -hmm. And LeBron was unfreaking believable in that game. And if J.R. Smith doesn't forget the score, they probably win. <laughs> so um Steph and and I think this is the reason that a lot of people discredit him or or are hesitant to put him in the top, you know, whatever of all time. I don't want to get into the argument, but but pick a pick a number 10, 15, 20, whatever, mm -hmm. is because his his dominance in a game like LeBron's just like, okay, I'm taking over. Give me the ball. I'm going to get to the rack. I'm either going to score or I'm going to get fouled. And there's nothing you're going to do about it. Steph isn't that. He's not physically strong, physically big, dominant player. He's going to do it by breaking down your defense and warping your defense and hitting a bunch of threes. And it just looks different. Mm -hmm. And that's that's a detriment in a, in a series like this where – the Warriors a few times are like, man, they need a player that they can just give the ball to and they just pound their way to the hole and they score yeah. or they get fouled. And Andrew Wiggins a little bit, but not, not, he's not, I mean, he's not a player you're just going to give the ball to and say, hey, go get us 30 tonight. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I think that, that that's, that that's fair I'm saying Steph's the best player in the series, but Boston's just better. Hey, we got to get out of here and we'll talk about this next week. I just want to say, Oh, people are starting to get a glimpse of Trey. They starting to get a glimpse of Trey, and they like, oh, 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 oh it's looking like something. Oh. It's wild how fast I said this on the podcast the other night. Wait until, wait until the first couple of training camp practices when he plays well, and we're looking back at March and April and going, man, remember all those stories about how the Niners were super dissatisfied with Trey mm -hmm. Lance? Boy, yeah. they they kicking Jimmy out the door now. They like get out. Get out. <laughs> Candlestick Chronicles is the name of the podcast. Subscribe, rate, and review. Kyle's got that tattooed uh, on his colorful arm right there. Subscribe, rate, and review. My chest. Yeah, nice. <laughs> Candlestick Chronicles. Uh, also, check out Niners Wire. We talked Warriors today. He covers the 49ers. We'll come back. James Ham will be with us here on Sacramento's number one sports station, ESPN 1320. Clear. See you, Kyle. See you, Casey. Good stuff, man. You have air conditioner, don't you? <laughs> oh yeah. Oh okay. Um, I feel okay. So you know, I went to DC for my honeymoon, mm -hmm. and we went to Mount Vernon, mm -hmm. George Washington's house plantation, and um, they had this shirt for sale. It's George Washington's signature right here, and on the back is like his crest, like his family crest. And I was like, this is really cool. I'm going to buy this. I love history. This is dope. So I bought it and I put it on this morning or I grab it out of my thing and I look at it and I was like, man, it's a good shirt. And I put it on and then I felt it like feels very January 6th ish. Mm. And I'm wondering if I have to retire this shirt. Mm. Look, at the back. look at the back. Oh, buddy. Yeah. It's got like. As, <laughs> yeah, I think it's time to say goodbye to that one, pal. I think I have to. You can this send this El Rio in uh, a. <laughs> I don't know. That's tough. Uh, uh, this will be the shirt I wear if I ever get into any dust ups. A little dust up shirt. Yeah. Um, oh, it's tough. <laughs> tough. This is that's a funny comment that John made. Rolling your sleeves up to your freaking neck. <laughs> John is John is funny. John makes fun. Um, yeah, I might. This might be a cut the sleeves off, and this is a yard work shirt. <laughs> it might be the move. <laughs>
be, be careful what neighbors endear themselves to you. Are you worried? Hey, I got one of those too. Hey, did you go? Did you go? No, okay. no sir. I don't want to go to a rally at the Capitol with you. That's <laughs> no, okay. You. I'll skip that today. No, thank you. No, thank you. Yeah. Oh man, that's too bad. That's unfortunate. I know. I didn't even notice that. I wore. I bought it in DC. I was like, "This is cool." I wore it in DC. I'm like, yeah, look at me being, you know, George Washington. And then, uh, and then uh, this morning, it just. I maybe it's because of the the hearing yesterday, but I put, it on this morning. <laughs> put it on this morning. It was like, oh no! Probably the ten minute video that was released. Kyle was looking at it like that. Why does that look familiar? I don't know. I'm not worried about it. <laughs> is that that shirt? <laughs> is that is that Washington's family cross? What is that? Jesus. <laughs> oh no. That's terrible. Cold world, man. Cold world. Yeah. So before you go, make do I understand this correctly? Uh -oh. If the 49ers cut Jimmy Garoppolo before week one, it only cost them a million dollars. Is that yeah. right? Wow. Mm -hmm. Mi million and a half. Yeah, let's I think it's like one point four. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, basically twenty six point nine five million to keep him. Yeah. Wow, twenty five wow. and a half to savings if they cut him. Wow, and it's before week one, right? Like that's why that's why them keeping him has never mattered. Like the money doesn't matter. Like the money, they aren't like the Debo and Bosa contracts have nothing to do with Jimmy Garoppolo still being on the roster. Right. That his money doesn't doesn't count. Yeah. Well, that was just interesting. That, 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 that is savings. Yeah, big time. <laughs> that's, why, that's why he's gone. Like, they're not going to carry a $27 million backup. <laughs> that is not something you think about. <laughs> like, that is not something you mull over. It's like, no, that's... that's right. It's $25 million. It's over. Yeah, they'll take it for yeah. sure. So. All, All right, right man. Have a great weekend. Yep, see you guys. Better my love. All right. Yep. Later, bro. I'll just stay here. Okay. Um, I, I was reading Graziano's article earlier. I just confirmed with Kyle. They saved $25 million by cutting Jimmy before week one. Bye. Yeah, it's like, geez, like this isn't a, this is not even a topic of discussion. <laughs> but you, see, that's the thing, Robbie, you don't have to. Like you, you can let him rehab and work and yeah. work out. Like you don't have to cut him right now. That's the thing. Probably doing him a favor. <clears throat> yeah, right. <clears throat> Great stuff from our guy Kyle Matson, as always. Normally we're talking uh Niners football with him, but obviously he works for ninety five seven. And he's a Warriors fan. Uh, so a good, good dive into the NBA finals. You know, following the 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 Twitter war of Trista Crick versus everybody involving Golden State, one of my favorite responses from some of the Twitter people about mm -hmm. Trista were like, Why are you always talking about the Warriors? And you know, Trista doesn't engage in a lot of that stuff. But I chuckled like she's a national NBA reporter. There's only two teams playing. <laughs> What would you prefer she does? Hey, this is this is what I say all the time. I deal with this with the 49ers and people get all bent out of shape when people say this and that about the Niners or whatever. And I take Inbertier on it. Inbertier. I take Inbertier on it. Is that what you say? Inbertier. In Inventory? Inventory. Inventory. <sighs> Let's get these things out of here in just a second. I got <laughs> I didn't even know what you like, that's not it inventory like, like Kenny got a word that I am not like, like I'm trying to say it all fast and it's it's getting worse the faster I try to say it is use your vowels <laughs> I take inventory inventory there you go all the situation that, that is the, there you go Soren that is yeah I see that's the I'm, so, I'm slow on it Soren but you got it <laughs> you got it <laughs> but um you know that's part of the game like if you have a team that is 
the one of the top teams in in the league or you know in that given sport or whatever the case may be people don't talk about you they're gonna comment on your team you can't get all bent out of shape every single time somebody says something about the team that that you don't like or you know or you know you see this all the time like with the night when we talk about trey lance and all this other stuff and i like it's it's trey lance uh any good oh you're just a hater you don't know what look they don't know they they know they don't know they're not paying attention they going off of something adam Schefter might have said they ain't outside they're not outside they're not outside it's just what it is man so warrior fans you would think they'd be used to us now they've been in in the in the spotlight for the last seven eight years yeah they'd be used to it but they still get upset when somebody don't say something pleasant about them oh, they don't man um i'll try to say something pleasant about them here like they can still win this series i i i, I if i were to put if i were to put the rest of this series on a singular stat mm. i'd put it on the celtics turnover stat mm. about was it 12 or less 15 what, it was 15 or less damn oh, oh they, they had 12 turnovers in the last game that's why that number's in my head. 15 or less, they win. 15 plus, they don't. Mm -hmm. Simple as that. I I would I would ride I would ride the whole series on that stat. If mm -hmm. if the Warriors turn the ball over 14 times tonight, or excuse me, if the Celtics turn the ball over 14 times tonight, they've won. I that's a good bet, to be honest with you. And the other thing that I would I would combine with that as well. And I I actually think that this one is going to be something where um, the Warriors step their game up is the rebounding numbers. I think the Warriors are, are really going to take uh, note of what happened in game three on the boards. And I think there's going to be a lot of team rebounding. They're going to go in there. All five guys are going to look to rebound. They're not going to be as quick to leak out. And I think mm. that margin might be a little quicker, a little closer than it was in game three. How does that, that just feels like the most anti-Warriors thing possible. Yeah. I yeah, mean, they got the right. crap kicked out of them on the boards, though. So, like, you you, you would think of, of the adjustments that they have to make. That's got to be their biggest. Like, it was – like, the the, uh, the 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 offensive rebounding statistic was was bad. It was, like, 16 to 5 or something like that. Um, 15 to 6, excuse me. But, mm. but the total rebounding edge was 47 to 31. Mm. Yeah, I – Look, man, they're gonna have to have all five guys going in there, and 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 you're right. This may be something that is against their nature. Like they're not used to having all five guys rebound. Clay Thompson may not be used to having to come down and, and look for long rebounds. Same with Steph Curry, whatever the case may be. They want to get out and get early on the break and spot up and things of that nature. But you're gonna have to because Draymond Green, and this isn't a knock on him, it's just his size like he's not tall enough to to match up with rob williams a lot of time he's gonna have to box out then hopefully the the ball drops to where he is in in the box out but sometimes he's gonna have to box out and let clay thompson come in there and, and get the the actual rebound you know for this thing to to go through the way they need it to go through to be better on the boards that's a good call uh on your part um would you say that's the number one thing that the Warriors need to fix is rebounding? Uh, well, no. they okay. got to stop points in the paint. They've got to stop penetration, and they've got to uh, offer up some type of resistance inside uh, to Rob Williams, to Horford, to Tatum, to Jalen Brown. Like these guys, Marcus Smart, they're, they're getting a switch on Curry, and they're like, oh, it's go time. I'm going to the bucket. And the thing about it is, and that, unless you play Looney longer than what you have, I don't know how much that changes because you don't have somebody inside that can deter any of those shots. Looney played just 16 minutes uh, in game number three. Um, anything you want to see Boston do differently? Uh, game four of the NBA Finals tonight, by the way, uh, on ESPN 1320 beginning at 5 o'clock. Um. I want to see Boston. I want to see them really not differently, but I want to see them continue to attack the basket. 
You know, I think that opens up everything for their game. If they're being aggressive, trying to go downhill, attacking the basket, that opens up. Eventually, it's going to suck the defense in. They're going to be able to kick out and get some wide-open looks from three. So I want to see them continue to do that. Obviously, uh, take care of the basketball. Um, but they they probably got – they can finish a little better than what they had inside, like you mentioned yeah. earlier. You know, you get to the cup, like finish at the rim. Come Where, on are, we? Where are we? Where are we? 26 of 41. Hmm. In the paint, it's not. Yeah, you could be, and you and, and Jesse can probably forty one now at least sixteen of those misses because they was, they. I mean, they they just had some roll off. They yeah. had some bounce, bounce back. Yeah, so they they can be better in that respect, and obviously, just being a little bit more aware, I guess, in that third quarter, you know, and like. If they can, if they can stop that run and stop that outbreak, this game would get ugly. Thirty-five. They don't have the third quarter. If they don't have the third quarter, might be a problem. Let me try that again. Thirty-three to twenty-five uh, was the third quarter, which doesn't, all, all things considered, it doesn't even feel that bad. Like because they've had, I think, prior to to yesterday, it was like plus. It's like plus 37, plus 38, something like that uh, in the fourth quarter uh, for the for the Golden State Warriors. You're listening to D'Lo and KC on ESPN 1320 KIFM West Sacramento KRXQ HD2 Sacramento and Odyssey Station driven by Lasher's Elk Grove Dodge. We welcome in 1320 Kings insider and creator of the Kings beat uh, James Ham. James, uh, unfortunately, the first person to appear on today's show wearing sleeves for those oh, yeah, I was just gonna ask. I missed the memo. Like, what's up? Yeah, there? no, there were there were there were definitely some some there, there there was some talk in the chat house about James appearing uh, on the show. Just uh, no sleeves. Just make sure those sleeves don't go to your neck. All right. You, know, you got to roll them up to your freaking neck, buddy. You, gotta, <laughs> That's you right. got any thoughts? You got any thoughts on on game four before we 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 dive into the Kings? Like we we've been talking all week about. You know, I'm kind of a little bit more adamant than Kenny is. I think the Celtics are just better than the Warriors, and I'm I'm, I'm starting to feel like they might be a lot better uh, than the Warriors um, with Steph Curry as the Warriors' saving grace right now. Yeah, I'm not ready to give up on the Warriors yet. I mean, I'm not either because of Steph Curry. I'll give up on everybody else, but I ain't giving up on Steph Curry. <laughs> yeah, I I got you. I I feel you, but at this point, I I mean, the Celtics are tough. They've shown uh like an intestinal fortitude that I don't think that we thought was there, right? This is a, a team that's taking leaps and bounds. They're battle-tested because of their path to, through the Eastern Conference, yeah. and they look ready. And I, I don't think the, the Warriors were fully ready for that. And and again, I think it all comes down to the, the one thing that we keep talking about. If you can take a, like a right cross in the third quarter and you can stagger but not fall— and and you come out firing in the fourth, then you can hang with this team, with this Golden State Warriors team, and you can beat them. And uh, we've seen it now, you know, every game the Warriors come out and beat you up in the third. And if you can do a little rope-a-dope and, and hang in there, you can beat them in the fourth quarter without any question. It kind of feels like the Warriors, after game one, they're like, ah, you know, we, we let we let that one get away. Um, after game two, they turned up a little bit in the third quarter and, and spread out. And they're like, yeah, that's that's more like that's what we'll be able to do. And I, I know it's just a feeling. I'm sure the the players have the ultimate respect, but it feels like they always thought they had this in hand and it was just going to be easy work as opposed to looking at what was really going on and saying, oh, this, this Boston team, they're right here. They're ready to play with us every step of the way. And I don't know. I, I wonder... I think they got their attention now. They know what time it is now. They know, hey, we've got to put together a full four quarters. We can't just hang tight and get in that third quarter and expect to to, to run away with it. Because for the most part, his, this Celtics team, they, they can take a punch. They don't have a glass jaw. So they'll take that, and they'll still be in there. And in the fourth quarter, they've dominated the Golden State Warriors. So Boston is just like, let's just get to the fourth quarter. And – it, whoever, if Boston, like you said, if they take that punch in the third quarter, I think they could they could knock the Warriors out tonight. Yeah, I mean, this is the biggest game of the series. 
right? Mm -hmm. If, well, to date, there there could be a much bigger game down the road. Um, but if the Warriors don't figure out something now, coming back from 3-1 is tough. I mean, they've been here before, though. Uh, and we, we've talked about, like, that's the, the trick with these guys. They know what they're doing. They, they've been here before. It might come down to whether or not they have the talent to keep up. Um, but it could also come down to whether they, they mix it up a little bit. Maybe they give a guy like Kaminga a shot to come out and play a little bit and give them a little bit of an, uh, a little bit of energy. Um, I, I'm not ready to write them off yet. I, I think it's, uh, it's going to be, I still think I, I'm picking the Warriors. There's no reason to write the Warriors off at all. Um, no. I just think the Celtics are better. Uh, let's talk Kings basketball here. Hammer, there's a variety of things to, to talk about. How about this from uh, the baby giraffe, uh, our man Tim Maxwell. This hey. is, got my attention here, James. Curious your thoughts. Kenny, same thing. Oklahoma City calls and offers number two for the number four in Davion Mitchell. Do you do it? Oh, yeah. I mean, not to... Not to diminish D- Davion Mitchell, but yeah, I mean, you drive him to the airport. Mm. Um, I know that that's tough, but there's no question there. That's you can move to number two in this draft. It clears up the the best player available fit thing completely. So, so here, okay, it, it does. So here's the tough question then: Who do you draft? Mm. Well, it just depends on who's Jabari available. Jabari went one. We'll say Jabari, Jabari went one. Well, then you draft Chet. Mm. I don't think there's any question. Mm-hmm. See, James, you 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 walking into a thunderstorm today, because me and the, and the boys, man, we've been watching Paolo Bancaro, and he's good, James. Oh no, he's good. Draft. He's good. The bro. Draft. <laughs> so so here's how I again I look at them. Um, number one, I think that Jabari at number one is he's the most like 2022 NBA player you're going to find. You know, he fits so many different things. He, he's basically Jaron Jackson Jr. with uh, with a little bit more of LaMarcus Aldridge, or LaMarcus Aldridge mixed in, and he'll block shots at a higher rate than he did in college because um, he's not going to play next to Walker Kessler, who averaged like 47 blocks a game. Like, he, you couldn't get a ball past that guy. Um, so I think he's the perfect NBA 2022 prototype. Um, I think Paolo Bancaro is by far the most polished product that we're going to see coming into this draft. He's going to probably win the rookie of the year. He's going to be the guy that everyone's talking about early in his career. I think Jay Nivey has the highest upside out of anyone and could blow up and be a superstar. Um, and I don't think his floor is that low. And then I think Chet Holmgren is going to be the guy that impacts winning the most. He's going to be the best defensive player out of all of those guys. He's the best fit in Sacramento, and that's why, I, for me, it's a no-brainer. And, I, again, I like Paolo Bencaro, but he doesn't play defense like Chet. He, uh, he doesn't block shots like Chet. And the skills that Chet has are translatable to the NBA, and I think he's going to be really good. Hmm. Interesting. So here's here's the deal with with Paolo and Chet and even Jabari for me, right? Because when we when we talk, I mentioned this earlier, and I'll explain it to you, and I'll explain it for those who didn't hear. When we talk about you know basketball players and who the Kings should go get, I'm always going towards offense, right? And people are like, you hate defense, you don't. It's not that. With me, when looking at the Kings. You have to have somebody that can bring you home is what I'm telling you. You know what I mean? You have to have, like, Marcus Smart is amazing. He's phenomenal. It's not the same if you don't have Tatum, right? He can be as great as a defender as he wants to. If you don't have Tatum, then none of this works, right? And I keep talking about this type of guy for the Kings because Chet and whoever is a great defender and all this other stuff, they're great defenders. It doesn't matter if you don't have the guy that can bring you home. And I look at Paolo, if they were in that situation, Paolo's the guy I think that can bring you home offensively. And then you go find you a a defensive guy wherever else you want him to, whether it's the three or the two or whatever the case may be. I think it's easier to find those guys than it is 
I'll put it to you like this, and this is kind of off because Smart is special. It's easier to find Marcus Smart than it is Jason Tatum. Oh, for sure. I don't disagree with that at all, but I think you're discounting the fact that De'Aaron Fox was like second in the NBA in fourth quarter scoring two seasons ago. But everybody's telling me he's a two. Like a number two, your your second best player on the team. That's what everybody's telling me. But the problem is that they couldn't get a stop. You know, they just kept trading baskets with De'Aaron Fox going at guys. And if you would have got three more stops, you would have won eight more games. You know, mm. like that's that's the way it goes. Like in the NBA, you have to get stops in crunch time. And I think that they already have that guy on the roster. Now, do I think De'Aaron Fox is like a, a no-brainer number one option? No, I don't think that. I think that you could find somebody who's a – a higher, a, a, you know, they can be a number one and move Fox down to number two. But that's not always how basketball works. It's not how, you know, winning basketball works. And, uh, like, it, it's difficult because uh, Brennan asked me on the podcast um, on Thursday. Uh, it was a complicated question. Um, like, do you draft for fit or do you draft for need? Like, even if you move down and, like, you have to – I just keep turning this draft over in my head – and fit it does matter like and his question i think was do you draft for fit with fox and do you at number four do you choose with the idea that you have fox and sabonis on your roster and that the quick answer is like of course not no I, like i'm going to draft jane nivy if he's the fourth guy that's if he's still there mm-hmm. and the the draft goes according to the way that everyone thinks it will that your three big guys will be gone um, but I'm still going to draft with Fox and Sabonis in mind because you still know what you need to make this thing work. Like you can't just completely throw it out the window. And if you move down from four, I'm certainly drafting for fit, like fit over everything. And then again, like if we look at guys like Jabari and Chet, they're in the same tier for me. And you could, like I always said that they're, in my opinion, there's three tiers in the top four picks. There's Chet and Jabari, then there's Paolo by himself, and then there's Jaden Ivey by himself. As we get closer and closer to the draft, that's kind of compressing, where it almost is becoming one top tier, and it's become a four-man draft at the top. Mm -hmm. And I don't think anyone is going to argue with that, that this is a four-man draft, uh, and that if you have an opportunity to draft one of the top four guys, then you should be drafting one of the top four. There isn't anyone from five to 60 who has jumped leaps and bounds up so high that they should actually be considered at number four. Now that doesn't mean that the Kings are going to abide by that. They may have some different ranking system and, and go off script and do something that, but again, if they do that and it turns out bad, they're going to look like they did when they, they drafted Marvin Bagley over Luka Doncic Hmm. because it's very clear that this is a four man draft at the top and you're the fourth pick you should be drafting whoever falls to you at number four hmm. and, I, and again I, I do like palo and i do like chet and i do like i don't Jabari. think you like palo you heard oh, our no, I do. You, you you heard our feelings today is the, <laughs> the, in all theory, is the, the is the drop off from chet to palo defensively that great oh it's tremendous you're looking at a guy who blocked i, I think he blocked 30 something shots in in 38 games or whatever in Paolo and of his blocks half of them are unsustainable like at the at the NBA level um he's going to be a really really good scorer like don't don't get me wrong he'll be a solid rebounder he's not going to be a great rebounder and he's going to be a really good passer I think both of those guys translate to really good passers at the next level Mm -hmm. Uh, but the problem that you have what's that you said both of those guys Paolo and Chet yeah, Paolo and Chet. Yeah, they're both going to be exceptional passers. Uh, both of them are going to be guys that you can actually run an offense through. Uh, with Chet, of course, not having nearly the scoring potential of Paolo. Um, but again, I don't think anyone really has the scoring potential of Paolo in this draft. Uh, mm-hmm. That doesn't mean that Jaden Ivey is not going to take some crazy leap. And that's why you draft him, because you think that there's that potential. Um, but when I look at the defensive differences, um, Chet can guard multiple positions with no problem. Um, he averaged what 3.6 blocks per game in like 27 minutes. So it translated to almost five blocks a game. And Paolo just doesn't have that. If Paolo needs to play with a conventional rim runner, right? He needs to play with Mark Williams. He needs to play with, 
even Rashawn Holmes, uh, you know, a guy who can have his back and, and cover his weaknesses. Chet's not going to have weaknesses on the defensive end, and he's probably the best defensive player in this draft. Um, and he doesn't just block shots. He can stay with people on the perimeter. He can do just about everything that you need him to do. Hmm. All right. Well, you know I like Chet, too. We both like Chet. Fine. Fine. James ruined our day. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, this is, but this is what I say about not – getting stops and and i know you know the way the league is played now um you know they're switching and all this other stuff but if, if you're talking about stops chet helps that but to me and this is just the way I, I view basketball and i coach basketball your stops start on the perimeter so you can get your chet or paolo and if guys are blowing by or working those guys on the perimeter like yeah they'll help but that's not going to alleviate the problem if it stops that you need, it's a perimeter to defender, in my opinion, is is where you should be targeted. Yeah, but I think perimeter defenders look different with with elite shot blockers behind them. No, you know, the chicken and the egg thing. Like if you yeah. get blown by and you have a guy to block the shot of the guy you get blown by, you, you your defense doesn't look as bad, right? Yeah, and, and I think at the NBA level too, there's so many pick and roll actions. There's so much switching and everything else. Um, I, I think Chet defends the perimeter extremely well. He defends the pick and roll extremely well. Um, you know, his length is like incredible. Seven, six wingspan. Um, standing reach is, is well over 10 feet. Um, yeah, I, I just think that he's a guy that can make your defense better overall. If he's the guy who's with a guard and a pick and roll set out on the perimeter, you can't just shoot over the top of him. There, mm. There's, you know, it's, it's, he mucks up everything on the perimeter. So, yeah, I mean, I really like him defensively, and mm-hmm. I, I think like he has potential to be an All NBA defender without any question. Uh, whether it's first team, second team, third team, it doesn't matter. Like the Kings don't have that guy on their roster. Uh, Davion's a really good perimeter defender, but again, this is a different type of defender that can change like almost everything for you, and he can shoot the three. And you have to guard him at the rim because I mean, he's so incredibly tall. Mm. Why has Dyson Daniels? shot up so many draft boards over the course of the last two, three weeks or so? Um, It's a good question. You know, um, I I think first of all, the league is the biggest copycat league there ever was. So uh, when Josh Giddey had such high success last year, and you can even keep going back to guys like Ben Simmons, but um, the NBA Academy in Australia, they're doing great things. Whatever they're doing, um players are getting here and they're ready to play and they're smart kids and they know how to handle media and um they know what their job is and they're grown-ups even at really young ages and so i think that that's one thing um that you know you're getting sort of a a european basketball player but different you know a, a little bit different than your typical European basketball player. I mean, of course, Australia is not in Europe. I know that people, but (laughs) you understand what I'm saying. You're getting the basketball approach of a European player, um, but maybe a little stronger, a little more physical, um, a a little bit better passer. Uh, Like they just have a knack for seeing the floor. And I think the things about him, number one, he grew a bunch. He grew like three and a half inches in the last year and a half, I think it is. Um, so that's big. Uh, mm. Number two, he improved his three-point shot, and that was a huge question mark. To me, it's still a little slow. It still has a little Kyle Anderson in it. Like, you're watching. It takes a long time for him to get his release off. Now, he might be showing teams that he's sped that up, um, but at the NBA level, he's going to have a tough time creating space for himself to shoot a shot. It's He'll be fine in the catch-and-shoot, mm-hmm. uh, but even then, you know, a good closeout is going to be tough for him. Uh, but he's just really creative. He's a good steel man. Um, he's long, and, and he plays the passing lanes well. Uh, he's a guy, again, that can really improve your perimeter defense, whether he's playing the two or the three. Um, I, I worry that he's going to need the ball in his hands more than what, uh, you know, even like a Tyrese Halliburton. Mm. Like, he might need the ball in his hands that much, um, which is something, you know, again, with Getty, Getty needs the ball in his hands. So it's good that they have uh, Shea in, in OKC, but 
uh, you know, they need pure shooters all around those guys as well, just to space the floor for those two guys to work. Yeah, uh, yeah uh, I like him. Um, I don't think he should be in the running at number four, but I certainly have heard like anywhere from six to nine with him uh, that he could go in the draft and, you know, possibly six, seven, and he's going to be in Sacramento uh, in the coming days. So we know that for sure. Well, how's that been going with them bringing guys in? I've, I've heard, you know, Kings haven't really brought people in or they've been quiet about who they bring in. But does it kind of balance itself out because they've gone to, you know, these these pro days? And even in Chicago, they were – I remember the whole thing. They were interviewing a bunch of guys and, and there for those uh, workouts as well. Does that kind of get balanced out because they did those things – the fact that they're not necessarily bringing guys in? I think so a little bit. Um, I, I mean, it, this is just different. Like this year is different. I've, this is my, this will be my 13th year covering the team. They've never blocked us from seeing prospects like this. Hmm. And I, I blame it partially on staffing issues, but at this point that doesn't really matter. Uh, the fact that they're doing a workout today with like six second round pick prospects and we're not invited um, as media to be honest with you, it's a bummer for the fans because they're not getting any access to that. We're not getting any access, but we also relay information to the fans. Um, but I also think it's just a gigantic missed opportunity by the franchise. Like, people should be flipping out about this. They have the number four pick in the draft. Like, the excitement mm-hmm. should be crazy. Mm-hmm. They've stymied all of the excitement. Like, I can't imagine that people are lining up to buy season tickets right now because they're not hearing anything. There is nothing. The only thing that we can do is we can uh, we can do prospect breakdowns on our own. We can do film study on our own. Um, there is some information that we're getting from the outside uh, and all that, but but there is nothing really to like get excited about because they're so quiet and that's on them. And I, I think this last season we saw it where I don't think they brought in Davion Mitchell at all. And if they no. did, they brought him in on on the quiet and no one knew about it. And, uh, and, and I'm almost positive. He said they did not meet with him at all. Mm-hmm. And he was as, as shocked as everybody else when he got the, uh, when he got the call. Um, so like, this is just the way that they're going to handle their business. And I mean, I, I think sometimes it's better than, uh, putting all of your information out there like they have at, at certain times. But I also think that you can bring media in and let them see like the 101 prospects we saw like four years ago. Uh, which was just crazy, we're there every day, um, you can balance out like what it is that people know about the prospects you're bringing in and who you're bringing in. So like, I- I'm not really sure that it's, uh, it's all that. I-, I don't think they think it's that big of a deal, but at, at, the grand- at the end of the day, like they're not doing themselves any favors. They're not doing us any favors for sure. And I'm certainly not going to do them any favors in-, in the near future because that's kind of the way it's been. Well, and real quick, Damien, a lot of people in the chat are talking about, you know, isn't it good that we don't have leaks anymore? These, what James is saying, that's not a leak. Like, it's if not you a get leak. a guy working out, you want to kind of say, hey, we had Jabari Smith in here working out. Like, it's not a leak. It's supposed to be a story. It's supposed to be like, for lack of a better term, like PR. <laughs> like, it's PR. Know, that's yeah, what it is. Like, like that, and that is. My guy, Sean Cunningham, is like, what in the world? Like, all of these local ties, like anyone with local ties, you want to do a local story for the 6 o'clock news or the the 11 o'clock news, it's all gone. Like, Hmm. there is no local buzz. And and again, if I'm some of the agents and I'm looking at this like, wait, my guy's coming there and no one's going to be talking about him at all? No one's even going to know he got there and we're talking about a second-round pick? Hmm. I don't know that I'm going to keep shuffling my second round picks uh, to you guys. If I'm going to keep having them show up because there's no buzz, there's no interest in your town. You're just kind of styming, you're smothering your own uh, like ability to, to make fans excited about what's happening. And it's not about leaks at all. That's like people who think that I'm upset that they're, I'm not getting leaks. That's not it at all because what they're doing is they're forcing us to go around them. And that's not a good thing either. (laughs) <laughs> mm. I'm beginning yeah. to think this isn't the most smoothly run organization in the NBA. <laughs> I don't know. Just well, they gotta... chose a path. Oh. I mean, this is their path at this point. But I mean, I think the biggest thing that I'll tell people that are listening is that this path is completely different than any other year ever. So 
Like if you're drafting in the top four, or you're drafting in number 12, it doesn't matter. We've always had access to draft picks. What's, I mean, what's the, but sorry to cut you off. What's the path? Just going radio silent. That's the path. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's what they've done at this point. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's radio silent. So, I mean, and that's, again, that's their decision. Um, but uh, I just, I don't get it because there, there can be some excitement about what's happening here, especially when, again, you have local ties or you have a big name guy coming through. Um, all of these things actually have some value. And, and we hear murmurs like, you know, who may have or may not have come through already, but I'm not going to sit here and, and pontificate on who could have come through. I do know Dyson Daniels is coming through. Um, I know that because he talked about it in his interview in Indiana, but also um, I I was able to confirm that through someone else outside of the organization. Um, mm-hmm. A league source confirmed that he will be in Sacramento. So, uh, and a league source has confirmed the Charlotte Hornets have chosen their next head coach, mm. Kenny Atkinson. Mm. Oh, okay. Congratulations to Kenny, another uh, Golden State Warriors assistant. Mm-hmm. Uh, taking a, a, a head job here, according to Shams. Uh, Atkinson met with Charlotte Hornets officials, including owner Michael Jordan on Wednesday, and the franchise has decided on the former Nets coach as its new head coach. Atkinson brings development and defensive structure to a young and talented roster. Uh, so that's it, right? It was Sacramento, it was Los Angeles, and it was Charlotte. There's no one else. Utah. Now Utah is open, and Utah has requested to interview everyone except for me, James, and Kenny. Oh, no, I got the invite. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Kenny, know. did you get yours? I, I haven't. Let me see. Oh, hold on here. It was in my spam I think it's folder. because I wore sleeves, and they said, oh, oh we're not going to have sleeve guys, was, sleeveless guys in for interviews. You know what, though? It was in my spam <laughs> folder. I got it. I got it. It's Tuesday. I, I guess it's just me. I didn't. It's in I your didn't. junk mail. It's in your junk mail. <laughs> yeah, maybe. No, I'll have to. I'll have to uh, maybe they send it to the work email. But, uh, yeah, every five minutes. The Utah Jazz have requested permission, like, Man, how they, are they? They're doing a comprehensive <laughs> process driven, process driven, sir. Comprehensive, process driven. Goodness um, gracious, man. I think they're yeah. interviewing every assistant in the league. Yeah, that's a lot of people flying into that sketchy airport. That's uh, a lot of people flying in there. <laughs> yeah. Goodness gracious. Uh, yeah. All right, well, good for. Good for Kenny Atkinson. That's, that's a good, that's a good little fit. I'm anxious to see that too. He's got Lamelo. He's got some, you know, a, a ton of offensive weapons there. I'm assuming they bring back uh, Miles Bridges. Although somebody needs to talk to Miles Bridges. But you know, that, that's neither <laughs> it's neither here nor there. He needs to calm down a little bit. But they got they got some good offensive weapons over there. That's a good spot for for Kenny Atkinson. I think so too. Uh, he is a guy who's really good at developing players. And so, you know, you're seeing the development in Golden State with some of these guys, uh, your Jordan Pools and stuff like that. Um, I, he's always everywhere he's been. He's been known as the development guy. And hopefully that works out because that's a very exciting young team. Um, and they need something to, like, put them over the top. I, I don't know that there's a huge difference between him and Borrego. Uh, and mm-hmm. I think the Borrego firing was, like, pretty, pretty ridiculous and and rash but uh at the same time i think i think that's probably one of the better fits that i've seen and it's not you know i would have liked to have seen kenny come through sacramento but it just wasn't in the cards mike didn't mike brown didn't take anyone from golden state did he no but we don't have his whole coaching staff yet okay no i mean we only have rumor and innuendo so i mean i think i know four of them right um. Yeah, I think Triano, I know Luke. Uh, I, I can't. I, I can't. Uh, Jordy Fernandez. Oh, and, Jordy Fernandez. Yeah, and, and Doug. And Doug. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All so. Right. And, um, and they still haven't announced those. <laughs> that's so weird. Oh well, that's that's fine. I, I was I was about to say that's so weird, but that makes sense. Mike's Mike's coaching in the NBA Finals. Like I'm 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 okay with that. I get it. Like. His attention on the NBA Finals. I understand that. Well, I don't, be, I don't have a problem. They could be announced. They don't have to have the press conference. Yeah, I mean, they tweeted out a picture of one of them. 
Oh, did they? <laughs> yeah, they tweeted out a picture of Jordy Fernandez announcing Maybe him. That was his announcement. Come on. What's that? That was their announcement. Maybe yeah. that was it. Maybe they well, just pictures now. Picture. Why? Why use more words when less words work? What are we doing over there? James gets that reference. Come on, man. James, I know you get that reference. Say it again. When Kevin stopped you, when Kevin stopped using like normal oh. sentences. Oh yeah. Why use more words when few words do trick? Yeah. And you'll you'll get there in about ten Ooh, years. Trick. In about ten years. You'll, 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 you'll be fine. I don't know what we're doing over there, by the way. Like, what are we? I don't know what we're doing over there. Where? Downtown Sacramento. What happened? I don't know what we're doing. Why can't we uh, talk about people that are coming in to work out? Why are we sending out pictures for one assistant and not the others? Like, I don't know what we're doing I don't in downtown know. Sacramento. I don't yeah, know. I, I'm not sure either. Yeah. Maybe, maybe, maybe we'll just get a flood of information when the NBA finals are over. Who knows? Um, maybe they won't even announce the draft pick. Maybe they'll just ask <laughs> over to keep it a secret. <laughs> hey, Adam, I mean, we're going to hand you the card, buddy. Please don't read it. <laughs> I mean, I haven't heard if they're even doing like a draft party. Like typically, if you have the fourth pick in the draft, you're going to do a draft party. But. Yeah, they they've Maybe taken the whole years. They realize there's no reason to party. Well, look, I think they've taken the whole adage of nothing matters but winning a little too far. <laughs> like, We're not going to announce anything. There'll be no party. Nothing matters but winning. That's it. We'll come back. Um, can Keegan Murray crack top four in 2022 NBA draft? That's the latest piece from our very own James Ham. We'll talk about that when we return here and close out this Friday on Sacramento's number one sports station, ESPN 1320. The sneaky little one keeps getting out and coming downstairs today. I don't know what the deal is there. I hear it. I got people here. So what is happening? I close the door myself. She can't open a door. She's she's a corgi. Her legs are this long. <laughs> uh, oh, oh, did it went out today? Oh, did it? Oh, yeah. Look at that. Okay. Oh, Draft party. Oh, that that's. I, I'm intrigued by this now. Big day. I don't think I got an email. I guess I'm not invited. Well, I'm sure it's probably season ticket holders. I gotta work. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. Wait, we should do the show from the draft party. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I don't think I, I got the email on the draft party either. So cold, cold world, James. Damn. Oh. Yeah. No, no one in ESPN 1320 got it. by. can't imagine who kept us out of that. <laughs> Nick, don't want us around. Yeah. Intriguing. Yeah, I'm, I'm not, not on the website. Sh- oh, here it is. Yep. Join it us just, at Doco. It just popped up. Yep. It's on their website. Join us at Doco. Party starts at 3 30. Draft starts at 5. Are they trying to say they're going to be like outside? They're going to do it. It looks like it's outside. Yeah. Oh, yep. they're doing it outside in like 110 degree heat. That's by what that it, point. Yeah. That's Hopefully what it'll. I mean, it could be raining by that point. I mean, the way the weather is uh, going. Uh, it says capacity is limited and entrance will be granted on a. Giveaways, join fellow Kings fans. I don't know. Maybe maybe it's inside. It says Doco, though. It doesn't say Golden One Center. No, it's, that, that sounds like it's just outside. Join, yeah. Us, yeah, join us for a free draft watch party at Doco. I, um, I, uh, these are things that, you know, I, I think about. Where are they going to do, like, the whole watch party stuff down, like, when the, when the Kings make the playoffs? You know they're going to do it. Where's the screen going to be? Is it going to be up against the parking garage and they're going to cut off L Street and have people in, in the street in front of the parking garage? It can't be that little screen that are on the outside of uh, outside of the entrance because those things are too narrow. No, they're going to put up something big out there. I don't know. Like you usually bring in a gigantic stage. I, they need like- to just put it on the uh, on the the. Those screens they have on the parking garage across the street. Those things are massive. Yeah, but that's like right next to the, like to the street. I guess you could do it down there, or you, you could have part off, of it there. 
close off L Street and let people be right there. Yeah, I don't think they'll do that because uh, on that side is their VIP entrance and mm. their employee entrances are right there. So I'm going to guess that that would be difficult to pull off. Mm. I didn't even think about when they were this, home. I was thinking about that'd be for the away game, though. Yeah, that's they they probably still try to have them outside for the uh, for the home game too. Yeah, I think that they'll be able to do it out there in Doko. Like, uh, like I was at Jurassic Park, in you know, outside of the Raptor Stadium, like during the finals, and that was just crazy. So many people. I mean, there were people waiting for three days. There are father and son that waited three days in line to get in just to Jurassic Park, not to like, uh, not into the building. They didn't have tickets. Mm. And the last second, the Raptors, the Raptors had heard about them. Um, and there was another, I think it was a couple that showed up like day two and the Raptors heard about them and, and brought out four tickets and brought them into the, uh, into the arena for the game, mm-hmm. which was cool. Wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They're they yeah. nice people. It'd be a fun adventure. You know, it used to be like, uh, when we were young, if a big concert was coming out, you'd have to wait out overnight in front of like a ticket master. Remember that? Oh yeah. Dude. Yeah. yeah. It, it was kind of like I'm that, but for like, for like three days. <clears throat> I don't know. And it's chilly. I don't know what was worse waiting in line at 3 AM or dealing with bots. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know what was more of a challenge. Yeah. Probably bots. That's true. <laughs> oh, the good old days. Yeah, something like that. Sacramento. Uh, hey, hey. Go. Let's see hey we out here. We out here changing stuff, baby. We out here changing I, I think stuff. They're trolling us right now. <laughs> the Sacramento Kings have agreed to a deal to hire Jay Triano as an assistant head coach on Mike Brown's new staff. No, bro. They listen, bro. They listen. Trolling us heavy. <laughs> That's comedy. Come on, man. That yeah. is hilarious. On, this all happens in commercial break. The draft party <laughs> in the Wolves tweet. These oh, dudes man. are trolling us. Yeah, that's this, amazing. This is not a coincidence, bro. It can't be. That is fantastic. <laughs> that made my day. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, nice scoop, Woj. <laughs> Actually, it's not even his scoop. I mean, why don't you credit Mark Stein for, for doing the work? We're coming back. Sacramento Kings are definitely trolling D'Lo and KC here at this point. Hey, listen. Uh, during the commercial break that the draft party was announced today <laughs> draft party <laughs> June 23rd at doco free for everyone go party we won't be there uh we'll be doing an eight hour show that day we work adrian wojanowski with the scoop of the century the sacramento kings have agreed to a deal to hire jay triano <laughs> assistant coach on mike brown's new staff for those who are just tuning in that tweet from adrian wojanowski comes about four and a half minutes after James Ham says they haven't even announced these coaches yet. It's just stuff we found out. Well, uh, the first announcement has been made. Uh, the Sacramento Kings have agreed to a deal to hire Jay Triano as an assistant coach on Mike Brown's new staff. No, you know, I'm, like I said, I'm, I'm glad we could affect change out here. We are. So enough is enough, and it's time for a change. <laughs> we did it. We did it. Are you agitated? <laughs> <laughs> it's just par for the course, man. At this point, um, yeah. <laughs> Heaven you forbid you send out a. <laughs> you could be you could be pissed, man. We're family. Oh, uh, it's all right. I, like I, I don't really care. It's not like we didn't already know it. I, I'm not pissed that about that. What I. Again, I think it's disrespectful to the reporter who actually broke that story two or three weeks ago uh, to act like this is news. Like, that's that's all. And Mark Stein broke that story a couple of weeks ago, just like uh, Mark Stein kept telling everyone that, um, that uh, what's his name, uh, Utah Jazz head coach, Quinn Snyder, was going to step down. Mm-hmm. No, one, no one else ran with it. They all just sat there quietly, and then all of a sudden, 
breaking news. Quinn Snyder steps down. It's like, uh, Mark Snyder's been telling us that for like weeks, weeks. Like he literally wrote that like three days ago that he's, that everything's leading to Quinn Snyder stepping down. So, yeah. What's the, uh, what's the, 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 the reporter etiquette behind that? Like, what's the reasoning for that? Is it the person telling them? Is it, is it the platform? Like obviously Mark Stein, I think Mark Stein, he, he, he rocks like what you rock, right? Like he has his own newsletter and his own. Yeah. He, he does Substack. And um, you, you got to subscribe to him. He's not with the New York times anymore or anything. Yeah. Along those lines. Um, versus the athletic in shams or ESPN in, in Woj. Well, etiquette is still etiquette. Like I, I know today, mm-hmm. um, the news about Dyson Daniels coming to Sacramento, um, before he put the video out, the reporter, uh, for the ND star, um, uh, tweeted out that Dyson Daniels was going to stop. So I did my, I, I made a couple of calls and sure enough, I was able to confirm it. I went back, I credited him. And then he mm-hmm. fired back and said, Oh, you didn't need to credit me. I just asked the question at, at a, uh, a, a, draft workout and i'm like no 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 that's still yours you still broke that news like we had we didn't have that news until you put it out there so it's your news um i think that there is etiquette and that's why like i've always followed the best you can um that you know if you're right there uh like right now i can confirm that jay triano is an assistant (laughs) coach for the sacramento kings Uh. yeah there you go like literally just popped up in the corner of my screen that yes i can confirm that jay triano is an assistant coach for the sacramento kings hat tip to mark stein for putting out that news three weeks ago <laughs> james is not here for your nonsense if you thought james was here for your nonsense he's very much not well if you think i'm here to play around with y'all god damn it i <laughs> <laughs> I just, no, it's like the epic game of cat and mouse like it's just it's just silly all of it's silly i mean it, like yes i can tell you that doug christie is on the coaching staff but i can't confirm it confirm it through the natural sources but yes he's on the coaching staff oh, again hat tip mark stein so the let me let me ask ask you this though james um this the way these things go is this exclusive to the Sacramento Kings or are there other franchises that kind of handle the PR handle you know the news the way they do as far as like we just talked about before all this happened like we they've gone stone silent we can't get anything you can't get anything you know they're not putting anything out there publicly for people to have the information is this just are the Kings one of 15 teams that kind of go about things this way now, or are they the only ones? Oh, no, they're not the only ones. Uh, No, not at all. I mean, we, we heard rumor that the draft process was going to change going forward. We heard that last year. And that's because the teams totally got screwed over by the draft process. The NBA gave us all zoom links and we got to interview the prospect prospects ourselves, which Mm -hmm. became like the literally the most ridiculous thing of all time. Uh, all of the reporters would raise their hand on Zoom, and one by one they would go, so uh, have you worked out for the Knicks? And if you have, how do you? How would you think that you would fit next to uh, R.J. Barrett? And like Jeez. that's, and then the next guy would a- ask a question. Then like four guys in, someone would go, hey, do you mind just telling us who you've worked out for? <laughs> and then the player would go, let's start listing off names, and the rest of us would be like, are you serious? I, like as reporters we can be dumb at times like everyone doing the same exact thing um but uh yeah it's when they feed it to a national writer the reason why they feed it to a national writer is because they believe it has some sort of uh bigger meaning if they give it to somebody with a tremendous following that is going to get out there and go wildfire because that person said it um but it's a lack of comprehension on what actually happens. Like it, it, it's, there's this huge misunderstanding about what a Woj tweet means versus what a local reporter like myself means Mm -hmm. because Woj drops it and never looks back. 
someone else might write his piece for him and then like put out like a short thing mm -hmm. about and it might have some sort More of more uh, on the Sacramento Kings hiring Jay Triano. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. But is, then when yeah. it comes down to it, it really does uh it becomes guys like me who like tell the story, who craft the narrative about what's mm -hmm. happening. And you know, that's it's the choice that they make and it's fine. Like if you're a local reporter, you have to understand that Woj or Shams is going to get almost everything. Now, do I break stories? Sure. I break stories all the time. Uh, you know, I was the one who broke the story that Luke Walton would be staying. Uh, but again, there's there's value to why that happened at that time and why it doesn't happen at another time. Um, but it also, it, it burns your local media. And, and then again, who do you think controls, who, who is the one reporting on your team all the time? Mm -hmm. And if you don't respect that, Agents, agents play a big part in that too. Well, of course, Woj is yeah. Represented by some like these these insiders now, they make big money. They're re like Woj was rep by CAA. Like I I know in 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 in, in a lot has to do with relationships. I think I told you about one incident I was aware of. Woj knew the story, but they asked him, "Don't don't break it yet. Don't break it until." This time, like I knew exactly what time Woj was going to tweet something one time. I knew like down to the minute. And sure enough, the push notification comes and there's the Woj tweet. It happened exactly when I was told it was going to happen. But that's how it was worked out between the person involved and the agents. And that's like Woj. I'm sure Shams to a certain degree. And Schefter, these dudes are they're powerful in this game now. And you want them, if you're Monty or whoever, or Wes Wilcox or whoever, you want those guys on your side. And you want CAA on your side. And those, those uh, I mean, it, it sucks for you. It really sucks for us because I, I think you, I, I think you, that was such a great point you made. Woj is done with it. Woj ain't thinking about it. Like he ain't writing a, 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 a follow-up piece on this, but there are probably a lot of people who, who maybe heard this news come around the first time, or they just heard us talk about it here, or they'll see your confirmation tweet or whatever. And they're like, yo, tell me more about Jay Triano. Hmm. Well, that's coming from you. That's yeah. I mean, that's what they that's coming from you guys. Yeah. They don't get that. The, the next step is that your local guys pick up and, and do the analysis. And that analysis goes one way or another. Like, I mean, it's straightforward and, and balanced and fair, but, you know, at the end of the day, it's still our voice and our analysis uh, that that carries a lot further than the voice that they have out there. So it's great that everybody in, in Chicago got the got the memo that Jay Triano is the uh, an assistant coach of the Kings, but they don't care. Mm -hmm. It's people in Sacramento that actually care about that and— it, it's all right. Like, like you can't take it personal because this is the game. It's sort of the game we signed up for, and it's been that way for a long time. Um, but there's also, you know, like I, I could have tweeted out right afterwards. I can confirm that uh, Jay Triano has has been. But by the time I'm I'm off the radio, the Kings will have already like put out a tweet. I'm sure with uh, with his picture saying "Welcome, <laughs> Coach Triano." Uh, Shout out to Sean Cunningham. I don't know if you saw his tweet. Sean no. Cunningham tweeted confirming the hire of Jay Triano to Mike Brown, Sacramento Kings coaching staff, as first reported weeks ago <laughs> by the sign line. Mark Stein. See? <laughs> Bravo, my friend. Bravo, my friend Sean Cunningham. That's good. So, like, and um, I, again, I don't have any problems with Woj. Like, Woj plays a different game. It, it's it's a totally different game, and he gets paid millions of dollars to do it. Mm -hmm. So it, that's that's his business. And he's really good at it, and like he's carved out this incredible niche for himself. Uh, but if you ever want to read up on some of that stuff, you can go to Ethan Strauss and his Substack, where he actually talks about the uh, PowerPoint presentation that uh, NBA general managers and and staffs get about the power of Woj that he sends out to people and why you should give him the information. Um, it's a really in, insightful look. Uh, into the inner workings of, of media. And uh, so again, uh, it is what it is. You, you just kind of, we play the game. And 
I, I do my job the best I can. I show up every day and I tell people when people are, are missing from practice and when they're hurt and I have plenty of sources and plenty of things that I can put out there. Uh, but at the end of the day, when it comes to crazy news, like Mike Brown getting hired as a head coach at Sacramento Kings, it typically comes from, um, it, from one of the big guys. That sounds fascinating. What you just said, there's this whole presentation of, um, why you should give the news to what was that like seriously i'm like because i'd like to know i'm lost as to why you would do that like i get the 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 gist of it but the whole presentation about why it's important that you do that i'd love to see that that's crazy well he shows where his voice is more powerful than champs i mean that's why he does it and it's so like, funny we use the term voice because we're talking about a tweet, right? That's that's how that's how this type of news is broken. I don't need to rush to Sports Center to hear what Woj says about virtually anything. I need to see what he tweets. I have his push notifications on my phone because I need to know. That's how news is broken now. I just it's it's funny that we use the term voice yeah. when we're really just talking about social media. Well, even more so than that, his voice isn't more powerful than what actually happened. <laughs> Like if LeBron James signed with the Lakers, whether it came from Kenny in Sacramento or Woj, it doesn't really matter. Like him signing with the Lakers is all that matters. Yeah. I don't look at that news any differently because it came from what, like that's what I'm not understanding. Like the messenger in facts. Now, if you've got like stories or I'm hearing that such and such, yeah, maybe that there there's more validity to him. When you talk about something like this, the Kings hired a general, uh, an assistant coach. That's just a fact. They did that. I don't care if it came from Woj or Reese. It don't matter. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it's just about cachet. That's what it is. It's about you know him being the big dog and getting his his name out there. Um, some of these things that happen, um, he, it's not even big enough. He won't take it. You know, like mm. eh, eh. And certainly, I don't know how much he's going to write on Jay Triano. I'm, I'm going to guess he's not. Mm -hmm. Like, so it doesn't even really have any value to ESPN and their website. He obviously has a relationship with someone here. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah there's you there's no question. Clear. I'm not going to get into that. It's, it's, yeah. it's clear. There's some someone here who has a, a, a pretty good relationship with it. Yeah, him. yeah. And there's also someone here that had a, well, uh, there were people here that had relationships with, with Shams. And there's someone here who has a relationship with Sam Amick. And there are people here that have relationships with me. Like, there, but you're right. As far as national guys, there are certainly people that, that he has relationships with. And then, again, there's agents that have relationships with certain media members and not other media members. I have relationships with specific agents and not others. Um, it, that's just, it's kind of the game. Well, I'm going to tell you don't get news off of internet rumors. Wait, say that again. You don't, you don't get your scoops off of internet rumors. No, no. Um, Regardless of what some of these yahoos think out there, you know, <laughs> that I block on Twitter. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah. It, it is what it is. I mean, like I, I won't run with something until I've got it confirmed. Well, and gonna, that's just the way I, I am. I'm going to tell you all right now, I'm going to break down. I'm going to give you guys the game. Once hashtag King blows up and I start, you know, going through all this stuff, I'll give you guys the game. I'll let you know how it really goes down. <laughs> once right. once you make it, you're going to. Hashtag King. Just give me about six months. Hashtag King about to go crazy. It's about to go crazy. <laughs> hashtag King, arguably the funniest typo in the history. <laughs> Um, your latest uh, uh, profile prospect is on Keegan Murray. We spent a lot of time talking about uh, Keegan Murray this week. Uh, I saw some interesting things with uh, Kevin Pelton projecting him out potentially to be the third best player in this draft mm. uh, in a couple of years. Did Were you able to find a way in, in judging by the look on your face? You were not able to find a way to get Keegan Murray to the four spot for the Sacramento Kings. So what did your research turn up on this kid? Yeah, I, I mean, really, I like him. I like him a lot. I like watching him play. He's a good three-point shooter. He's incredible in the post. But first of all, the NBA doesn't have any post game anymore anyway. So he's not going to get the type of, of looks he got at, uh, at Iowa. The sheer volume of looks that he got um 
he's not walking into the NBA as a usage player at, at 29.7 usage, which again, I talked about the other day, which is higher than De'Aaron Fox's usage this last year. Hmm. Uh, he averaged 1.5 assists despite that usage rate. I don't think I know of another player with that kind of usage that doesn't pass the ball at all. I mean, 1.5 assists, his, his assist percentage was 10%. So I haven't looked it up, but I'm going to guess if he was on the Sacramento Kings last year, he'd probably be like 11th or 12th in assist percentage. Hmm. So how do you have a usage of more than the point guard and an assist percentage less? And if you are that person, you should probably be averaging like 40 points a game. So... I mean, that's just kind of the way it goes. Uh, and, and again, it's not that I dislike him. It's that I don't know how it translates. There's mm-hmm. not a lot of post-up moves in, in the NBA. He's really good in transition, and I think he's got an opportunity to be good there. Um, he can shoot the three ball, like I said. Uh, he does not have a real mid-range game, and he also doesn't have an off-the-dribble game. He doesn't create for himself or for others. He's a really, really solid, like... NBA starter. Could he be a plus starter? Yes. Can he be an all-star? I have a tough time seeing it. Um, I equate him to uh, like the high, high end is Tobias Harris or or Harrison Barnes. Uh, but he's a very high character guy. Uh, like he does check a ton of boxes and he would fit really well in Sacramento. The mm-hmm. problem that you have is that number four, you you have to draft for upside. And I just don't see the ceiling nearly as high. Um, all right, I can also confirm that Doug Christie and Luke Lauk are part of Doug are part of Mike Brown's coaching staff. There we go. Hey, there we go. There let, we go. Let, yeah. let, let let's let James tweet that and 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 get. <laughs> There you I go. need someone to convince me the Kings aren't listening to this show. <laughs> I need someone to convince me someone wasn't listening to, go to James Ham going, wait, we haven't confirmed this yet? <laughs> oh, all right. Give, give one to Woj, give everything else to Ham. It's clear as day, man. Three o'clock in Sacramento, everybody tapped into d and KC. That's what time right. it is. That's, that's where everybody at, d and KC. Hey, note to the Sacramento <laughs> Kings, when you're all ready, we ready. Come on. Take care of you. It's all right, baby. Come on. Now we roll. Now we go. Uh, James, I'm just, you know what? I'm going to leave James alone. Let him get this news out there about Doug Christie and Luke Louts. And oh, wait, wait. We, we didn't do that right. We didn't do that right. There we go. There now, we go. Now we can confirm Doug Christie and Luke Louts will be on the, on the King staff. A little breaking glass. Goodness gracious. There you go. <laughs> I, I hope I spelt his name wrong. I, I I mean right. I think I did not spell his name right. Luke. Now I feel bad. No, that's Laux. right. No, that's it's right. Laux. Is it plural? Is there yeah. is there more of them? Let that's me all right. re, 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 <laughs> quick quick, James, before it gets traction, redo it. Yeah. Once the mics get to pop and you gotta leave it out there. Oh yeah, you're way off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's 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 O U C K S. We're just working through some tweets That's here. Hard, man. If you're, <laughs> you're gonna say, you got to get it quick because once the likes get to popping, you're you, you gonna have to leave it. You know what I'm saying? So get it quick. Get it quick. Let me just, quick little delete there. Quick the little three dots. If you're oh, only delete. listening. You James is me, really trying to tell you he's not pissed. James <laughs> is furious. James has an F the world look. On, there we go. Uh, James there you go. Del Christy and Luke Louts are. Sorry, Luke Laux, if that's how we pronounce your name. We haven't got the phonetic spelling from the Sacramento Kings yet. To no, make sure that we... I, I did get it from Jill, though, which is as good as getting it from the Sacramento There you go. Kings. There, there you go. go. <laughs> on that. Uh, 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 well, the coaching staff is, is rounding in the form. <laughs> yeah, all of a sudden. <laughs> Well, hey, uh, just because we're on here, just shout out to my guy, Doug Christie, who is absolutely spectacular, and he's my guy, and I'm so happy that he's back um, because, you know, these things are scary. And it's Doug and I had had conversations for a long time about specific things like this, that you can take a job, and then a head coach can get fired, and the next thing you know, you're, like, scrambling trying to find a new job, and you gave up TV, and you gave up 
radio, but it looks like the Kings are going to, um, you know, stand by Doug. Now, Good what does this mean for Bobby Jackson? What does this mean for uh, Lindsey Harding or Stacey Ogman or um, name that, that Kings assistant? Uh, probably uh, Rico Hines. Yeah. You'll break that news later. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Hit the thumbs up before you go. Subscribe to thekingsbeat.com. Shout out to the members of the Sacramento Kings listening to this program right now. We appreciate subscribe, you. Subscribe, please. We appreciate you. <laughs> subscribe and leave a review if you wouldn't mind. We appreciate you so much for being with us. Have a great weekend. Best of D'Lo and KC coming up. NBA Finals Game 4 right after that here on Sacramento's number one sports station, ESPN 1320. Go Celtics. That was fantastic. You guys are crazy. <laughs> you guys are crazy. And just so you know, uh, Luke Laux, um, Mark Stein replied to me uh, and said, I believe, was the, uh, was the one and only Mark Spears. Mm -hmm. So he wanted to make sure Mark Spears got his, his props. That's how you do it. That's how yeah. you do it. No, I mean, I, I think that's where we're at, right? Like, it's... Yeah. It's hard because, um, like, how many times you do something and then they don't attribute. The worst is when you break something, and this is – I think this is the thing that um, that people should get. If I break a story, Woj won't do it, won't tweet it. Mm. So as opposed to giving me props for breaking a news story like I would any time, even if he gets it afterwards, which you know he's going to get it, you know he's going to hear it. He doesn't. Hmm. And I mean, that's it's just the game. It's the game that they play. But I, there's been this battle going on for a couple of years between uh, Shams and Woj and about not crediting each other and about um, sort of just trashing each other like that way. And uh, and Stein was part of it. But like Mark is going to hold to it. He's an, he's an excellent reporter from New York who was with the New York Times and ESPN for years and years. And just because you can't, uh, you haven't been, you're not part of the four letter network anymore, doesn't mean that you shouldn't get the same respect when it comes to breaking stories. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I could tell a funny story since we're off the air, right? We're just on, the, just on video, just on yeah. stream. So, um, after Luke Walton was let go, uh, Luke hit me up and asked if I could put out a tweet for him because he doesn't do social media. Mm -hmm. uh, just thanking everybody. Which I did. I said, yeah, no problem. That's fine. I said, here's a statement from Luke Walton. Of course, the Kings aren't going to put out a statement from Luke, and that's understandable. Um, I was asked by my former employer if I was the only one that got that or if someone else got it as well. And I told them that, no, I was the only one. And so they wouldn't put my tweet up on the broadcast in pregame or during the show the night he was fired. Because no one else had it, and I did, and that's how they played it. Hmm. Wow. Yeah. That's so... That's Random. so odd, man. It's like... I don't understand. Why you, that yeah. Oh, okay. I get you. This was... Yeah, I got you. <laughs> I love that they asked you, so you're the only one that got this, huh? <laughs> What's right. that? I, I, I love that they, they, they went to you asking yeah. you're the only one that got this. It's like, yeah, why? Are you not going to use it on the show because I said it? So yeah. unfortunate, man. Really? A tweet from the former head coach you're not going to put up? Hmm. So unfortunate. All right, a direct quote. Good for you. I don't understand this stuff, man. Yeah, it's such a weird game. Yeah, it's a weird game. Yeah, it's... But, you know, like half of it is, is relationships and everything else. And, and I'm sure there are plenty of things that I've said uh, that they don't like. But, like, having no ties, uh, being part of your guys' crew, having the Kings beat, it's fine with me. Like, I'm a flamethrower. I can and, – and I'm not – I'm never saying something that I don't believe is 100% true. So, yeah. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> All right. We're going to let James go get a drink. 
Oh, yeah, uh, I can use a drink. Oh, no, I have a high school graduation. And how hot is it in the 100 degree heat tonight? It's hot, dude. Yeah, it's it's hot. It's definitely Yeah, hot. my niece graduates tonight. My my youngest graduated from eighth grade yesterday. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, congratulations. That's, yeah. that's brutal. Sure. Man. The high school graduation outside? Oh, yeah, it's outside at Bear oh, River. Man. Oh, yeah. Shit. I'm going to wear like a giant hat. Wow. <laughs> Like a big wow. brim hat, yeah. I don't need. I don't need that kind of sound in my life today. <laughs> As John Bull says, all the more reason you need to drink. Well, there's that too. Yeah. Have a uh, have a wonderful weekend, uh, guys. We appreciate you so much. Uh, the draft is here next week, right? Right. The following week. The following. We got 13 days. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs>